I don't want to go to the bathroom, to be honest with you. Okay. All right. Let's uh, get that out of the way. And I'm not going to yet at all.
sleep. No, I'm too tired. Alright, don't fall asleep on me. I'll be right back. Ah, gonna try not to, boss. <laughs>
Um, the mom was a complete pill addict. Father was a heroin addict, serving time in jail for selling heroin to an undercover cop three times, which I don't understand how you can do that more than once. <laughs> Honestly, that kind of blew my mind. Um, I had the kids all day by myself, and they were being normal two-year-olds, you know, running around, falling down, throwing stuff, getting arguments, and whatever have you, and came home, and one of the kids had a black eye, and she's like, what happened? I'm like, well, they got into a fight, he threw a sippy cup at him, and so have you, and next thing I know, I had CPS on my throat. Well, you know, the child's got this, and the child's got that. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but it wasn't me. Look somewhere else. It was not me. I didn't have anything to hide. They looked at her. What I honestly think saved my butt was the fact that she didn't want to talk to him. She didn't want anything to do with the whole entire thing. Now, if it was my kid under going through that, and you want me to talk to you, I'm here, bud. I am all ears. What do you want to know? I'm not going to be like, oh, no, I don't want to talk to you guys. I, I just don't understand why she went from full cooperation and making me look bad to non-cooperation and making me look like the great guy. Who was that girl? Alexa Shields. <coughs> Where did that... Was that around here? Uh, that was actually in uh, Whitehall. Between Whitehall, Fort Edward, and Hunter Falls. Because the child was bouncing from house to house. Where were you watching the kids? What town? Whitehall. And what really surprised me the most is that within two days, it was actually on Friday, because she had court on Friday, had visitation rights on Friday. From Friday until Saturday, no problems. And then Saturday night, her uh, sister-in-law picks up the kids, and I know we're Sunday morning. We have CPS at the door. I don't understand how it could happen that quick. The bruises showing up as fast as they did. I don't understand how it could have happened that fast. I really don't. Fractured skull, broken ribs, broken lip. I was like, I don't understand that. Did they ever resolve it? I honestly really don't know personally, and I'm not trying to sound bad or anything, but from what I understand, the child is doing better now. It's with appropriate family members, but as far as I know, I don't know if they ever caught the person who did it or not. They never came back looking for me. They never asked me if I did it again. They never asked me if I was around her again. Once me and her broke up, I, I was done with that. I was done with the games, done with the drugs. I mean, she would pill, <laughs> she would pop like 13, 14 of her mom's muscle relaxers. And her mom beat the hell out of her for stealing from her. In front of me, I had to carry her up the stairs. I had to take care of her kids. I was the only one taking care of her kids every morning. Was this right in the village of Whitehall? Uh, honestly, I really don't know Whitehall that well, but it was like right down the road, kind of like from Family Dollar and the Bowen Alley and stuff like that. I mean, I really don't know the area too well. Really not from there, but it really wasn't that far away from anything. I mean, you could pretty much walk down there and hit a store in like 10 minutes, I think. Honestly. And that was a year and a half ago? About a year and a half, two years ago, yeah. So these kids, how many kids were there that you were watching? Two. And one of them ended up with some bruises? Yes. That, it was more than bruises. It was more than bruises. It was, bro it was a broken eye socket, skull, um, skull, uh, fractured skull, um, what was it? Dislocated shoulder bone. Um, at one point, I think I was told cracked rib or broken rib, maybe. Um, he couldn't walk, he couldn't talk, couldn't hold anything. Um, they took pictures of him, showed me the pictures of the bruising and everything like that. If they tried to think I was going to crack and admit to something I did because of a couple pictures, they were wrong. Because I didn't admit to anything because I didn't do nothing. Like, I didn't do anything now. Who showed you the pictures? Uh, one of the investigators. Um, I went up to the investigation office by uh, the Queens River High School. And I have no idea. I can't even recollect her name, honestly. It was a female, and I can't remember. It was that long ago. Year and a half. Yeah, about that. <laughs> year and a half, two years ago. Yeah, so it was 21, I was with my father. 22. Yeah, I was about 21, 22 when that happened. So you don't know if it's ever been resolved? I, I don't talk to her. And when she tries to contact me, I try to nicely to leave me alone. I don't want nothing to do with her. She's too psychotic. She's too crazy. And she blames everything on herself. For her having two kids, I know right where she is right now because of everything that's going on with her. She's constantly harassing her ex-boyfriends, which I'm... Huh, really enough really good friends with. 
Um, I see him every once in a while at the bar. We'll talk. We'll chit chat her. No problem. What I really don't get the most, and what really bothered me the most, and to be honest with you, I really don't understand why I'm going through this right now, but it's all good, is I'm the first one to get looked at. And I'm, and I broke up with Brittany Friday. No, Thursday. Is it Thursday night? Is it Friday night? I believe it was Friday night. I broke up with Brittany on Friday night, and all of a sudden, everyone's looking at me like I'm a bad guy. Like I did something wrong. I don't know why you would think that. Did you? I, I don't know. Brittany told me yesterday she's going right down to the top shop. Oh, I'm going right down to the, right down to the top shop. For what? Are you going to have someone arrested? Why are you going down there to file a, a report? Matt gets a phone call 20 minutes later. Oh, she's blaming you for this. Really? She's blaming me. For what? What did I do wrong? Because I don't want to be with her fucking crazy ass? Because I don't want to be with someone who's psychotic? I have more stuff to worry about. She lost her job. Lost her job within two weeks. Now, if you want to be a mom and you want to step up and take care of your kids, by all means, do you. I'm all for it. I wanted to help her out. We were on the verge of getting an apartment together. She was doing great at work. And now all of a sudden she has no job. She still wants an apartment. And now the baby got injured from bouncing from house to house to house. And what I don't understand is that last week I picked the baby up by myself and brought the baby to my sister's house. <coughs> Excuse me. Brought the baby to my sister's house where my sister was no less after she got out of work and Brittany stayed there for, there for a week with us. And my sister couldn't even vouch for that. Mm -hmm. There for a week. She didn't do anything for a week. No dishes. Didn't pick up after herself. Constantly left the baby on the floor. But yet, hey, can you go pick the baby up from my aunt's house? What time? 10 o'clock at night. You want a two-month-old out in this kind of weather at 10 o'clock at night? Really? Your kid. Whatever. Not going to argue about it. Sure. I'll go pick him up. No problem. Pick up the baby. Got back to the house. It was all fine. She trusted me then, but yet I'm left alone in the house for 20 minutes to take care of the baby while her and Matt walk to the store to get cigarettes and whatever have you, and I come back looking like I'm a bad guy because I was left alone with the baby for a whole 20 minutes. But yet when I'm left alone with the baby for an hour and a half to walk from Glens Falls to South Glens Falls, it's all good. I don't understand that. What do you mean by that? When, when was that uh, type of thing where you were an hour and a half? Because, um, her, uh, I think her name's Wendy, I'm not for sure, but, um, her aunt or whatever have you, I guess, are really good friends enough to be considered aunt and niece or whatever, 9 Grant Street, I believe, in Glen Falls, is where the baby was. Mm -hmm. I had no idea where the baby was, at home, I was walking home, no less, can you pick the baby up, what time? About 9, 30, 10 o'clock, tonight or in the morning, tonight. What time do you plan on getting out of work? I'll probably be out around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Okay, no problem. Why can't you do it? Well, the car that I'm driving in really isn't safe enough for the baby and da-da-da and this and other kind of thing. Okay, whatever, I really don't care. Yeah, I'll go pick the baby up. I'll walk all the way from the house, pick the baby up, walk all the way back to my sister's house by myself with the baby. No questions were asked, no nothing, baby was fine. She asked how the baby was. So it was He was crying most of the way. I didn't have anything to feed him because she didn't have anything in the thing. And I was like, you have everything that the baby needs. I have nothing. I picked the baby up. The only thing he had was a bottle, a little bit of formula, and that was it. I can't make a bottle out of nowhere in the middle of the street. I, I have no water source. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't just spit in a bottle and go here, you know, and drink that. You know, so I was like, I couldn't make him a bottle. I checked his diaper. He was fine. He was a little wet, but I figured we could wait till we get back to the house to change him, which I did. Wait till we get back to the house, changed him, sat there with him for a little bit, and he was completely fine, completely content. When was this? Last week. This is why I don't understand why I'm here. Because last week I was fine, and now, because I don't want to be with Brittany all of a sudden, I'm here. I don't understand that. Honestly, this is what's driving me nuts. Because I dealt with it a year and a half ago, because I was left alone with two children, they were two-year-old, okay? Two-year-olds throw stuff. They have temper tantrums. That's why they're called terrible twos. Last time I checked, that's why two-year-olds act the way they do. Because they're still growing up. She's telling everyone that the baby's teething at two months old. Putting orgel in the baby's mouth at two months old. 
I wouldn't do that, honestly. The baby shouldn't be teething at all. Not at two months. I mean, I, I'm not a father. I don't <laughs> never had my own kids. I mean, she's got three of them. But he only has control of one right now. Because mm -hmm. of everything in her past. What time did they leave Thursday? Uh, Thursday... In the evening, I believe... I was out of work. I got out of work at 6. Is that your regular work routine? Is it... 8, eight to 6 or something? No, I, I only go to work from 1 to 6. I only do about 5 or 6 hours there. And I've been trying to help out a couple people on the side, trying to make more money on the side and stuff. But on, on Thursday, you ended up at her house at about what time? Uh, Thursday, I got out at 7 because I stayed an hour late. <coughs> got to Matt's house around probably 7.15. 7.20 because it takes me a couple minutes to get everything ready and punch out. So about 7.15, 7.20 I got to the house. And I would have to probably say it was around like 8.30, 9 o'clock. She wanted to go get cigarettes. She wanted me to walk with her, but I really didn't want to because my kneecap was really hurt me from work. I didn't want to go. I told her I didn't want to go. And she started fussing about it, and Matt said, okay, well, you can stay here, watch the baby, me and you go. And I said, yeah, that works out. I'll stay here, watch the baby, spend the time with the baby, and that way you guys can watch this door and walk back. And I asked Matt, how come he doesn't just go up to Hess? And he said, well, I've been walking up and down hills all day. I don't want to walk up and down hills anymore. I'd rather just walk straight and walk there. Okay, no problem. It took him about a half hour, almost 45 minutes to get back, which kind of really bothered me because it doesn't take that long to get there and get back. What? You got out at 7 that night? Yeah. Now, do you walk or drive? I walk. So you walk from Kmart to Matt's Boulevard? To Matt's Yeah. Is it Matt's house or is it her house? It's Matt's house. She's not even supposed to be there. She's not on the lease at all. And Tom's already told Matt, which is Matt's landlord, that if he's there, Matt will get evicted. And Matt's been freaking out because he has nowhere else to go. His marriage is what it is right now. and He barely sees his wife. And she is driving him up the wall. He's already told me that he can't handle it no more. Does he work? No. Nope. He's just cystic fibrosis. He can't do anything. You know, as far as you and uh, this girl go, <laughs> where did you meet her? Um, I've actually been a long time friends with her. I've known a lot of her family, uh, a lot of her friends. We actually uh, grew up together. Uh, well, not really grew up together per se, but... Um, a lot of people that I know, she knows very well. Um, a lot of people that go to the bar Thursday and Friday night, you ask anyone, you know, any of my friends who I am, they can point you out right to me. You know, and be like, oh, oh that's him. That uh, the Daily Double. Do you go there? Yes, I do. Does she go there? Does yes, she does. Did you, meet, did you meet her? Did you go to school No, we, um, actually, um, I really can't recall how I met her. It was a long time ago. Um... Honestly, we never really hung out that much, and I really can't even recall how we started hanging out more. Um, I've always had a, a small crush on her. Uh, I thought she was a good girl, you know, whatever have you, and thought she was great to be around, but next thing I know, come to find out, I'm wrong. Completely wrong. She's early psychotic. She's bipolar. She needs pills. She needs counseling, as far as I'm concerned. And... As far as a mom, I can't knock her as a mom. I really can't. She's there for her kids when she gets the chance to be there for her kids. But the home's are worth ethic and house ethic personally. She lost her job because of all the appointments and everything like that that she's supposed to be had. And she wants an apartment. Well, for you wanting your apartment, you need a job. You need a job, you need money. And you go back and forth to work. She wasn't happy with that, and that's what more or less made me break up with her. Honestly. And I can't even recall when we even started dating. It was probably about maybe a month and a half ago tops, if that. I mean, we were off and on because she's crazy. I could say one comment to her and she flips out. But yet, it's okay for her to flirt with other guys and not expect me to get mad. What gets her angry? Anything and everything, honestly. 
The saddest part is when I told her that I had a 12-pack of Blaze Donuts for her, and I didn't bring them home because they wouldn't fit in my book bag. And she called me an asshole for it. What day was that? Um, hmm. Tuesday of last week. She okay. hands on and she, when she gets mad. She, she, she knows her little secrets that no one else knows. So when you cross the line, it's an instant bomb going off without even any fuse. Mm -hmm. It's just instantly lit and gone. She can sit there and be completely fine and talk to you. And once you're an asshole to her, make one wrong comment to her, I could be a dick to him and have him be, you know, a dick to me, but yet not get into any argument. But yet also say, you know what, I don't like the way your pants fit you. She'll snap. Instantly. Well, if you don't like how they fucking fit, and go find someone else where they fit fucking better on. Wow, well, also, I don't like the way the pants fit on you. Go change your pants. I just don't like the way they fit. And that's how she snaps. Does she get hands on with you, though? Does she oh, yeah. It? Oh, yes. What does she do? Uh, scratch my back. She'll pull on my nipple rings, bite my neck, bite my shoulder. Um, she'll sit on me. Uh, if I try to move or whatever, she'll go over to my neck. She'll hold me down. I've never laid a hand on her. And if anyone says I have, then they're full of shit. Because I've never hit a woman in my life. I've been raised better than that. I restrain her. And by that, I will grab her by the wrist, put her behind her back. And I will hold her there. I'll say, are you done yet? Are you finished? When you're done, I will let you go so I can go somewhere else and let you cool off. Are you done? Are you done? Are you finished yet? And she'll sit there and she'll laugh. And go, yeah, I'm done. Okay. I'm done holding you then. And then she'll get up, sit in a chair. She'll be quiet for about a whole five, ten minutes. And then once they make another comment, it's all over again. She'll snap on me again. But it's alright. I got used to psychos. I can deal with that. It's the hitting I cannot tolerate. What do you do when she snaps again? Same routine? It, it, it never changes. She'll curse at me, she'll yell at me, tell me to go fuck myself, tell me to go be with someone who's better than her. I'm not going to come out you, really. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even worried about it. She'll. Like, if she's going to hit me, whatever, bite my neck, I'll be like, listen, like, you need to stop. If you're not going to stop, I'm not letting go. So what if she starts coming it, towards you? I'll just go like this, like, you really need to stop. Just please stop. And then, and then when she'll start fighting me, she'll start, you know, going like this, we'll start going like this, and I'm like, no, you need to stop. This, this is getting old. I don't want to be with someone who's going to be like this. And then go be with someone else. Fine, I will. And I'll let go. And then she gets all mad at me. How long does that take her to calm down? Um, if she's got a cigarette in there, minutes. Oh, she needs a cigarette to come. Oh, out. yeah. Oh, yeah. If she doesn't have a cigarette, it's my fault. If she, if she can't go to the store to get a cigarette, it's my fault. When is the last time you actually had to restrain her like that? Mm, probably last Wednesday or last Thursday, because we got into a small argument. In the house. That was in like five days ago? About that, yeah. She, uh, she wanted to have sex after I got out of work, and I told her I was too sore and too tired to. And she looked right at me and she goes, Are you going to be spending the weekend with me? I said, Most likely, yeah. She says, What do you mean, most likely? I said, Well, I don't know what's going on yet, and I want to go out with my sister this weekend. She didn't like that because she wanted to go out that weekend. So we compromised. I went out Thursday night with my sister, had a great time, walked home with my sister, no problem, no nothing. No phone calls, no text messages, there wasn't a pair on the world for me and my sister that night. Friday night, me and Brittany and Matt and Emily all go out to the bar and all hell breaks loose. Some guy I don't even know she gets into an argument with, he storms out of the gate, she walks inside the bar, all pissy. Comes in front of me, tries to yank me away from my from one of my friends, 
pulls me by the arm and tells me, you need to come here now, and yanks on me. I had two of my friends hold me back saying, no, he's not going with you anywhere. You need to leave him alone. You need to leave him alone. He doesn't want to be with you. He, you need to leave him alone and back off. And she still had me by the wrist, no less. Still by the wrist. Yanking on me, pulling on me. You need to come talk to me. All my friends are holding me back. No, you need to leave him alone. You need to leave him alone. Back off. Go away. And everyone's telling him this. Even one, of the, even one of the bouncers at the bar could tell you she was getting out of hand. And that was Friday. And that was Friday night. Thursday was... Thursday night, I don't know what she was doing Thursday night because I left Matt's house around 8.30, 9 o'clock. Got back to my sister's house around 10, 10.30. Because I, I hoped it because I had the iPod, thank God. And I waited for my sister to get home. She got home and we went out to the bar. Is that the night she went for the walk to Cumbies to get cigarettes? Was that Thursday or Wednesday? That I believe was Thursday, because that was the night I left to go meet up with my sister. Okay, so and Tuesday, was Thursday night. she was mad something about donuts? Yeah, because I told because she has a thing for glazed donuts. I don't understand why, but she does. She's obsessed with them. Mm -hmm. You tell her she has you, you have glazed donuts for her, she's your best friend. You bring them from the bakery over there? Every once in a while, the women over there, when they're a couple of days before expiration, They'll leave them out, and they'll be like, Chris, you know, if you want to take them home, you know, we're just going to throw them out in a couple of days anyway, you know, we're, you know, you're okay with it, you know, you have plans, you're all good, and they're just going to get thrown out, you know. So I'm like, all right, cool, no problem. You know, I thank them all the time. I'm like, well, I don't want you guys to get in trouble, you know, for giving me something that's off the shelf, you know. And like, Chris, between 24 and, 20 and 48 hours, they're going to be in the garbage anyway, you know. So whether you buy them or not buy them, we're throwing them out, you know, regardless. You know, so just take them, get rid of them, do whatever you want to do, eat them, whatever, they're still good. Take them home, whatever. All right, well, I forgot them. Told her, yes, I had them, but I forgot them. I wasn't going to bring them, but they wouldn't fit in the book bag, so I left them there. I wasn't going to go back and grab them before I punched out, and I forgot about them. I'm sorry. Just, whatever. You don't care. You don't love me then. Whatever. So you leave, if you could be a little more precise, like times that you left and when uh -huh. you got who? Who was there when you when she when you told her you didn't have the donuts? Was there anybody else there? Uh, I think Nat was there. I'm not exactly sure. And if he was, I really don't think he heard it. And the baby? Uh, the baby, I believe. I believe the baby was in a car seat. No, the bouncer. She's been putting that baby in that bouncer a lot. I believe the baby was in the bouncer, and she was sitting in the corner chair in Matt's house. I had gotten out of work at 6.30, so I only stayed there for about a half hour. Watched the house. Watched the house got there, then 15, 20 minutes, I lay with really bothered me. Got there, told Matt that I had some garbage bags for him if you need them, so I'm not to worry about it. Uh, I think he went outside, I'm not exactly sure, I really can't remember. So I didn't stop drinking. Um, she was in the chair, told her that I had doing his work, but I forgot him. You freak out on it? No, she she was all mad and huffy and puffy and just didn't talk to me. She didn't come at you though. No, <laughs> it, it's, it, the only time she pretty much does that is when like she thinks it's funny to fool around, and she'll come over to me and she'll you know start nitpicking at me and start trying to tickle me in the side or something and I'm like, babe, you know, stop, stop, you know, I, I really hate being tickled there and she's like, oh come on, come on, I'm like, babe, you really need to fucking knock it off. And she's like, wow, what, what's your problem? I'm like, you know I don't like being tickled there. You know, it hurts. I have rib problems. We fucking knock it off. Whatever, be all fucking pissy then. I'm like, I'm not being anything. You know, and then, she's, and then she'll bite my neck thinking it's funny. I'm like, babe, that's not funny either. What, it's not your ribs? <laughs> no so, shit. she was a little mad about the donuts not being there. Yeah. What, what was the rest of that night? How did all that go? Um... Okay, I mean, it, she doesn't really flip out that bad, but she does. It, it, it's just weird. She has her moments where 
She's going to be completely fine. And then she just gets all irate for no reason. What time did you leave that night? Mistaken, the baby was on Matt's bed sleeping with the bottle. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because Matt was in the chair. Me and her were on the couch till I had to leave. She had all upset, all happy puffy, whatever. What was she upset about? Because I told her I had to leave. But it, it's really weird because I told her I want uh, I want another nighttime job so I can make more money. She was all mad about that. Is that the night she wanted to have sex? She told me, uh, yeah. She said that she planned to have sex all weekend long. With and She's like, well, what are you doing all weekend? I'm like, I don't know why. She's like, well, I plan on getting late all weekend. I was like, must be nice to be you. So I'm a little fucking sore and tired by her. I, I don't perform on demand, dude. Like, sorry and shit. I don't. And she's like, whatever, fine. I'll just go find someone who does. Whatever, fine, go ahead. Why do you really don't love me that much? She told you all that? Yeah. Uh... So. so when you left, the baby was on. The, can you see the bed from where you guys were sitting? In no, you, no. It's in a no. separate room. Yes, that's what really bothered me the most. So I told her I really didn't like the baby sleeping in Matt's bed because I really couldn't tell if the baby was okay or not. And she'd always tell me, "Don't worry, the baby's fine. Don't worry, I can hear the baby. You know, I have great hearing. You know, I can hear anything when the baby cries. You know, I'm always right there." Okay, whatever. Your kid, I'm not gonna fucking fight. I'm not gonna argue. I'm not gonna bitch. I'm not gonna moan. It's your kid. She told me point blank, face to face. Well, you know, they're my kids, and I'll take care of them however I want to. Really? Well, if they're around me, and they need to be disciplined, and they tell me to go fuck myself, I'm gonna go put them in the corner. I hate to tell you, but I'm gonna put them in the corner. Sure. I'm not gonna hit them. I'm not gonna discipline them. Because last time I checked, you can touch a child, child abuse. I'm good. I'm set. Stay in the corner. That's how I was raised. If you got in trouble, you, your ass is standing in the corner. Do you ever watch any of her other kids? Nope. She doesn't have her other kids. She does not have her other children. At all. She does not have her other son or her daughter. For what reasons? Honestly, I did not tell you because I was not there. I don't know. I don't want to know. She got them taken away for whatever reason, and that is on her. I was there after all that went down. Not included in nothing or any of it. Don't know, don't care, not my business. The only thing I care about is Cole. That's the only thing I care about. Is making sure that everything goes down right for him. And she can only, you're not the father, you don't need to worry about it. Okay, no problem. But yet, she calls up John, who is supposedly the baby's dad, and starts yelling at him and cursing him out, telling him that we need formula, that we need diapers, we need wipes. And she gets all hoppy puffy, starts cursing him out on the phone. I even have his number in my cell phone. Saved. For her. And her friend Amanda. Saved. For her. That way she can call anyone that she needs. But it's not good enough. Wasn't good enough then, ain't good enough now. She couldn't get any help from him until she apologized. She didn't want to apologize, so I manned up and I did it for her. So John, this is her boyfriend Chris. We need stuff for the baby. Do you mind helping? No problem, not at all. Cool. That's all he wanted was to be asked. Not yelled at, not talked down to, not cursed at, just simply asked. What's his last name? I don't know. I couldn't... Well, Does he live around here? Honestly, I, don't, I never met him. I don't know anything about the guy. I never met him. So you leave Tuesday and you walk home? Yes, I always walk home. Grant Avenue or South Point Falls? Uh, South Point Falls. Grant, uh, Grand Avenue was where the baby was when I had to go pick him up. Which I really don't think was fair of me to have to go pick them up, but whatever. It's a pretty long walk, isn't it? It is. To South Point Falls from there? It, it is. And that's why I told her. She's like, well, can you pick a big up at 9, 30, 10 o'clock? I'm like, I, really? Are you serious? Like, I'm working right now. You haven't worked in a fucking week. You sleep all day. What was the last job she had? Wendy's. She just recently got fired from Wendy's about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, if that. She worked there long? No. She didn't last a month. Did Ms. Shanko ever work at Wendy's? Nope. He, he, as far as I know, the only job that 
he's ever had was years ago, and it wasn't even in the same county. Mm -hmm. What was your Wednesday like? Uh, Wednesday... Wednesday was good. Wednesday was fairly okay. I got out of work. What, what time did you go into work? One, like usual. I'm there. I, I try to leave my sister's house between 11.30 and 12, because it takes about an hour, hour and ten minutes to get there, roughly, depending on what way I walk there. Um, so I normally leave between 11.30ish and 12, get up between 11. Uh, walk to work, stop there fine, had a good day at work, surprisingly. Uh, I think she stopped in. Her and Matt stopped in, I believe, on Wednesday. Have the baby with the baby? No. No. So who would have had it done? Um, probably Margo and Kevin from next door. Because they like to babysit every once in a while for her. Because Margo likes spending time with the baby and stuff like that. So they go over to the next door neighbors, ask them to watch the baby while they come and visit me at work. With me not even knowing anything about this. And I've been yelled at more than once for them coming to the job. And I keep telling them that they can't just show up randomly. They gotta wait for me to let them know when I'm on break. She doesn't care. She'll walk right in there, find me. I'll be cleaning something up. Oh, well, can you go smoke a cigarette? No, I'm busy right now. I'm working. What time do they show up? Randomly. They'll show well, up at... What time? Sometime um, between 1 and 6, right? I was on break at 3. I went... I went on break at 3, and they showed up probably around 3.30ish. I went outside with them for a half hour, smoked a couple of cigarettes with her, told her I had to go back to work. She got all pissy. And she likes to play that whole entire kissing game where she thinks it's funny and they constantly want to kiss and won't let me go until she gets one. And then it's another one, another one, another mm -hmm. one, another one. I'm like, I really got to go. Whatever. Fine. Yeah. See where this is going to go. Okay. And then I'm like, Matt, I got to go back to work. He's like, yep, I know. He's even yelled at Brittany. Brittany, he's got to go back to work. We got to go. You know, he's even told her, he, he's got to go. You know, it's 4 o'clock, but, you know, we got to leave. You know, he's got to go back to work. She doesn't want to. You know, she never wants to leave. But she does. She'll leave. And i be like, okay, well, who's got the baby? Oh, well, you know, the next door, or so-and-so's got him, or he's here, or whatever. Or did she say the baby was? <coughs> I think she told me Margo's, I believe. And I asked her where the baby was, and I was like, okay, so where's the baby? And if I'm not mistaken, I think she said that Margot was watching them for a couple of minutes while they came and visited. And then she was going to go back to Margot's and roll a couple of cigarettes, pick the baby back up from Margot's, and go back over to the house and wait for me to get out of work. So I got out on Wednesday. Did she ask you if you were going to come over? No. She just expects me to. She'll just give me that look like you're going to come over, right? That kind of look, and I'm like, uh, I guess so. And then she'll be like, uh-huh. And then she'll walk away. Matt will ask me, yo, you're going to come over after work? Most likely, yeah. Okay. Well, door will be unlocked. We'll probably be home. Okay, no problem. So you get out at 7 that night? I believe so, yeah. Walked over there? Yep. What happened when you got there? Nothing. It was all hunky dory. Everything was all fine. No problems. No nothing. She had the baby. Matt was holding the baby for a little bit. I was sitting on the couch with her, smoking a couple of cigarettes, and baby was fine. Baby had no problem sleeping. Everything. Woke up every once in a while. Of course, being a two month old, crying, freaking out, and of course I say the same thing every time. I always say, "He's probably hungry. We need a diaper change." Yep, probably right. I know I am, because he's been sleeping for a while. He probably needs a diaper change, or probably he's hungry. You want to feed him, baby? If you want me to, sure. I don't care. I'll feed the baby, sure, whatever. So she'll give me the baby, or give Matt the baby, or she'll take the baby, and one of the three of us will feed him. And then one of the three of us will change him, and he'll be fine. She'll put him in the jumper or the car seat, 
and rock him back and forth until he goes back to sleep again. Was this baby crying when you got there? No. Matt was holding the baby? I believe, uh, I believe so, yeah. Matt was holding the baby. I asked him how the baby was doing. He said, fine. The baby looked fine to me. The baby looked okay. And I said, okay, well, you know, you want me to take him for a little bit so, you know, you can, you know, relax your arms or whatever, sit down and relax. And for him having a disease that could kill him, he'd be a really good dad because he has not let that baby out of his sight, out of his arms. He pretty much fights with Brittany to hold the baby. When he wants to hold that baby, he wants to hold that baby. He does not like letting go of that baby at all. Does she ever try to, no. like, a, like a tugging match, like, you know, I want No, as, as far as I know, she'll just get up and, you know, she'll just get up and, you know, as, as far as I can tell, she thinks it's fine to play around with him and whatever, and she'll be like, oh, well, it's my baby and whatever, and if I want him, I can have him, and that's like, yeah, well, you know, who's got the baby right now? I do, and da 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 you know, they'll go back, and, you know, they think it's fine to argue, and... I mean, I gotta admit, it is kind of funny because she gets all mad because Matt won't give the baby up, and it's kind of like, but I mean, you're kidding. You're holding him more than she is right now. How does she get the baby back? Matt would be like, oh, well, if you're not gonna stop bitching, here you go. You know, he'd be like, here's the baby. And she'd be like, thank you. She'll take the baby back, sit down with me, and then she'd be like, you know, she'll, you know, hold the baby and whatever, feed the baby or whatever, and then, you know, I'll look over, I'll be like, no, he's content. He's fine. There's nothing wrong with him at all, you know? I'm like, why wouldn't you just let Matt finish watching the you know, movie holding him, you know? Because I want to hold my baby. Okay. Hold I'm your, not sure if I misunderstood you. <laughs> hold your baby, Bob. A little while ago, did you say the baby was fidgety that night? Oh, fine. Fine that night. He, he was a little fussy and stuff because oh, he's a normal two-year-old. But, I mean, Matt takes care of that baby 110%. When did he become fussy? And just every once in a while when he wakes up. Um... I guess so he's been saying the baby's been eating. 7.30, you walk in. I'm just trying to... 7, uh, 7.30, roughly get there around 7.15, 7.30. Okay. Um, Matt's got the baby. Matt's she's got the baby. On the she's on the chair. chair. Well, couch, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Baby's um, fine. Baby's completely fine. Completely fine. No problems, no nothing. Um, I have noticed, though, every once in a while, even with Brittany, with myself, with Matt, no matter who holds the baby, um... When the baby's sleeping and you move just right, um, he likes to move his head around a lot, which really bothers me a lot because nobody really holds his head. And he'll roll his head over like this, and it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, I think his neck's going to snap or something, so I'll hold him in place. And then Brittany's like, you really can't do that. I'm like, why? She's like, because, you know, he needs to, you know, be able to move. I'm like, he's rolling around like a fucking bobblehead, bud. Like, I'm not going to stand here and let the baby's head go backward and fucking forward and smack off my chest. It ain't happening. Oh, that's fine. He'll be fine. Really? That's normal to you? I don't think that's normal. Unless my check, that wasn't normal. But, okay, whatever. I'll do whatever you say. I'll treat the baby just like you want me to. No was problem. that a conversation that night, or was that another day? It, it, it's 24-7. It's an everyday... It's an, okay. Whenever I have the baby, it's an everyday thing. Every time. If she doesn't like how I'm doing something, she'll correct me. Mm -hmm. With a quickness. Well, you're not doing this right. You're not doing that right. You need to stop doing this with the baby. Well, if you did this, the baby doesn't need this. The baby doesn't need that. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't know that's not what you wanted. I'm sorry. She's like, oh, well, you know, feed the baby. Okay, how many ounces? Really? You've been taking care of the baby for how long now and you still don't know? Well, you guys have been going fucking back from 6 to 8 to 7 to 9 to 12. I don't know what the fuck you're feeding the baby. What number? 6. Okay, no problem. What really upset me the most is that feeding the baby milk, some syrup stuff, and... A tea and, and a thing of baby formula really got to me because the baby was giving us dirty diapers almost on a regular like constantly and I was like sweet you know okay cool caramel syrup or something like that I think caramel syrup. Ca car yeah caramel syrup that's what she was using Black colored stuff it, it was it, clear kind of like a um, um, I want. I want to say you took like pancake syrup, 
and took the black out of it, that's what it looked like. And she stopped using that for some reason. I don't know why, but she did. She went right from milk and carrot syrup and a little bit of baby formula to straight out water baby formula. And now all of a sudden the baby has not shit in like two or three days at a shop. Will not do it at all. But yet has little pebbles coming out every once in a while. I don't understand that. I don't understand why you would switch from one thing to another. Why would you go from feeding your baby milk and carrot syrup and having dairy diapers on a regular to changing it to just straight up formula and water? That's what I don't understand. That's what really bothered me because I was like, you can't do that to a fucking kid. You can't do, you cannot do that to a baby. Well, it's my baby, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> whatever, but I'm tired of fucking arguing with you. I'm tired of it. So getting back to Wednesday. It was. Um, you sat on the couch day. and had a cigarette with her. Yes, I did. And um, Shanko was holding the baby. The yeah. Baby was okay. The baby was fine. What What happened as the night went on? What What happened? Uh, as the night went on, baby was fine. Um, crying every once in a while from being hungry. Uh, dirty diaper. Peed a lot. Um, got changed. Um, Who changed the baby? I changed the baby, I think, twice. Matt changed him a couple of times. I think Brittany changed him a couple of times. Um, we all take turns changing the baby, holding the baby, doing whatever. Um, hmm. That's night they went to combis? Yep, I believe so, yes. How did all that come about? Because she was bitching me out for smoking all her cigarettes, like she normally does. But yeah, I don't even know how she can afford a fucking pack of Newports when they're $10 a pop. So I was like, thinking to myself, how do you always have new parts? But I'm not going to start an argument with that because it's just not worth it. And she said, babe, I want to go to you know, the store so I can get cigarettes. You know, if you're going to smoke them all, let's go so I can go a bit more. I, babe, I don't want to go. I really don't want to go. Well, why not? My fucking kneecap hurts. Do you not understand that? I don't want to go. And then Matt would be like, Matt came out with, okay, well, if he doesn't want to go, me and you can go, and he can stay here and watch the baby. I said, there you go, you bitch about me not spending enough time with the fucking child and you. Why don't you leave me here with the baby? I can take care of the kid for you. You guys can come back. It's a stress reliever for you. Think fucking twice, smart one. Why not? And she just didn't want it. She did not. No, I want to spend time with my man. I want to spend time with my boyfriend. Matt, you're fine with the baby. I want to spend time with my man. Well, I want to spend time with the baby. So can you and Matt go, please, so I can spend time with him? Fine, I guess so. They came back. She was wondering what was wrong with the baby. I said nothing. Baby was fine. Baby was on my chest, sleeping. No problem. And I said, what's this mark on his shoulder? She says, what mark? So there's a mark on his shoulder. She says, oh, it must be from his car seat or from his bouncer. I said, okay. I didn't think twice about it. I really didn't. did not honestly think twice about it. She had the baby more than I did. I barely go over to the house. Because I can't stand being around Matt's wife, let alone the way the house is. And I told her that I'm not going to be around at the house if she's going to be there. And I'm not going to be there if the house is going to be destroyed. And I told that point blank to her face and I told Matt to his face. I'm sorry, but I can't. I'm not going to be in a house where there's nothing but fucking fruit flies. How can you subject your child to that? There's nothing but flies around because of her fucking guinea pig that she's not ever there to take care of anyway. And yet, Brittany has no problem taking care of that house to make sure that her child's a lot better. And she wonders why I don't come over. Matt got out of the hospital on Monday. It took me until Wednesday to go over there. It took me three days to go over there when I knew he was out of the hospital Monday. What time did they leave for Combies? Um, I probably say around like 8.30. And then Matt handed the baby over to you? Well, Matt gave her the baby, and Matt was getting ready. She had the baby for a little bit. And I said, okay, well, if you're going to the store, then give me the baby. And she goes, okay, no problem. She handed me the baby. She got ready. And they left. What was the baby wearing? A onesie, like usual. Just a onesie and a diaper. If even a onesie at all. <laughs> um, what do you mean? Well, can you remember if it was in pajamas or if it was just a diaper? I believe he has one onesie on. I believe. Because it really wasn't that hot out that day. And so I really didn't like him being in a onesie if it was really hot. Mm -hmm. Did you have to change him at all? Yeah, 
I had changed them a couple times. Um, I think I changed them two or three times and they were gone. Uh, my cell phone was off, so I couldn't call them or anything like that. I haven't had a phone in like a week and a half. Two or three times in 45 minutes? Yeah, he, he really does pee a lot. Seriously, like, he really does. You can ask anyone. That, he, that baby pees a lot. It's almost like every 15, 20 minutes he will pee in that diaper. Like, it's crazy. It's insane. And I even told her, I'll, and he's like, and she goes, okay, how, you know, how many times you change the baby? I said, two or three times. She goes, you feed that much? I said, well, you, you guys have been fucking feeding him almost, you know, every half hour. Yeah, he's got to pee that much. So that he's not been giving me dairy diapers at all. He's just been peeing a lot. Why is that? Oh, it's probably just a formula. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. Whatever. Baby's fine. Here you go. Take the baby back. And that was it. That was the night. I just left and went home. And that was it. When they left, who had the money, her or Andrew, to get to get cigarettes? Uh, I think Matt had the money. Did she hit you up for money? I don't get paid until Friday, so I don't have any money in me until Friday. Was she mad that you were smoking her cigarettes? Uh, not so much mad, but I think she was more mad because I didn't ask more or less, and I think she wanted me to ask her, but whenever I have cigarettes, she doesn't have to ask me for them. She just goes in there and takes it, which really bothers me. So when they left, you really don't know who was going to pay for them, right? I, I, I didn't even know she had money. She just told me, baby, if you're going to smoke on my cigarettes, i got to get more. Okay. So they go, you had the baby. I had the baby for um, almost a good half hour, four or five minutes. I mean, it was amazing how long it took them. Diaper and a onesie? I believe so, yeah. Is there air conditioning in the house or fan? Uh, or air conditioning in Matt's room. There's only one. And there's one fan in the house and that's in the living room. And that's it. Was that was that running then? Uh, it's so always on. on? Yeah, it's always on. It's always it's a cool on. whole apartment town? Not really. Honestly, no. Um, she sleeps in Matt's bed with a baby, which I really don't think is appropriate. I told her that many times. Um, and even Matt's told her that. Um, she sleeps in Matt's room and Matt's bed because the AC's on 24-7. So she goes in there to cool down with the baby. And honestly, it, it really does help the baby calm down because of the coolness. Because when the baby gets really, really hot, he, he tends to throw up and he tends to pee more. Which I really don't understand how that works out, but it does, I guess. I don't know. So you've got the baby. I had the baby for about a half hour, 45 minutes. Did you feed the baby at all? Uh, I tried to make the baby a bottle, but he wouldn't take it. He wasn't hungry. When you were making the bottle, where would you put the baby? Uh, put the baby down on the couch, snuggled him up in the biggest blue blanket that's always on the couch. Uh, and he had a donut pillow around it. And that's what she uses. She said, it's fine, that you can leave him like that while you go make a bottle, it's not going to take you that long, it's whatever. So I said, okay, no problem. I didn't think it was right, but it's not my kid. I'm, I'm only going to listen to the mom as so far as I can, you know. So I was like, all right, no problem. So I put the baby down, call him up, completely wrapped him up, and I put the pillow behind his head, lifted him up so that way his head was on the pillow, and that way his body was inside the pillow. So if he tried to roll, he could get stopped, just in case. Mm -hmm. And I try to be as fast as I can. I don't like to microwave the bottle at all. It takes too long. So I turn the hot water on, let that go for a little bit, and when I think it's appropriately enough to where the microwave would do, I put the bottle, fill it up with about six, six and a half ounces of water, take about two or three scoops of formula out, shake it up, give it to the baby. No problem. Well, I made the baby the bottle that night, and he did not want it at all. Did not want it. Just wanted, he, he didn't want to lay there. He didn't want the bottle. I tried giving the pacifier. He didn't want the pacifier. I don't know what his problem was, but he was just really cranky. What's, and what's really cranky? I mean, cranky when cranky, I cranky like that, screaming like so loud it could shatter a window, like that cranky. Like it was so loud it was like wow, like ear blowing pitch noise. And I asked her, "How come he's doing that?" She was, "Oh, probably a bad gas built up." Did you call her or something and say? No, I, I I had to wait for her to get back. So how long was the baby cranky? About 15, 20 minutes. I, I, I was trying to burp him. I would bounce him on my knees like this and have my, you know, have my hands on his back. And every once in a while, I would get a burp out of him. I'm like, okay, cool, you know. And then he'd start, you know, start falling asleep. 
I'm like, well, I'm not going to bounce you on my knees and hold you here if you're going to pass out. That means I don't feel safe doing that. So I would pick him up, start screaming instantly. The second I moved him, freaked right the fuck out. Like I was abusing the hell out of him or something. Like, boom, right there, once you picked him up, all hell broke loose. How so I put him right back down. How did you pick him up? I would go like this with him and lift him up like this. So this way my fingers will be underneath his jawline right here. And that way my thumb will be in the back of his head. And that way when I would pick him up, that's way I can elevate him nice and slow. And I would always lean with him and that way I would go like this. Oh, so he's face like down. Face down. And um, you're, you're picking him up way, by the chin? Both of the arms would, would swallowed out mm -hmm. like this. So he would be looking like this. I would be bouncing nice and gently like this. And he would be almost completely passed out. No crying, no fussing. I don't know why he likes it, but he liked it. So, you know, I'm doing this, and every once in a while I'll get a burp. Okay, cool. Well, I would pick him up, and I would go like this, because I really don't like picking him up underneath the throat. It bothers me. So I would put my, fing my uh, index fingers underneath his chin, and then my fingers behind his head. And that way I could lift him up just like that, and underneath the arms. And that way when I lift him up, he would have no problem. Head was completely secure. And that way he can flop around, and he was all secure, right in my arms. That way, just in case anything happened, I still had control of him, just in case. Because I got four scars on my wrist, and my wrist tends to give out. And I told Brittany I don't like holding the baby when my wrist is hurting. She doesn't care. So I hold the baby anyway. And I've almost lost control of the baby three times. And I've been like that. It scared the hell out of me. I've gone to Brittany and told her, you got to take the baby. My, my wrist is killing me. I can't hold him no more. Well, well why not? You knew that, right? No, surprisingly. It really didn't. I mean, I, I work with it completely fine. I mean, the garbage it weighs more than he does, and I can do that right up over my head and throw it right in the dumpster with no problem. It's just that every once in a while... It's uh, a baby, though. It, yeah. yeah. But it, out of, like, nowhere, it just gives out. I mean, my kneecap gives out. My, my wrist gives out. And if we were to give out, could you lose control of doing, let's say you're lifting, uh... If I had the baby and my wrist was to give out, the way I turn with the baby, I would go like this. If my wrist was to give out, I would cave right in. That's the first thing I do, is I would cave right in. It's never happened before. And, and just go right this, just in case. Because I'd rather, I'd rather, it's really going to be bad to say this, but I'd rather compress the baby than let the baby be mobile. Because if... In my opinion, the baby is more wild that he can roll off me and get hurt. I'd rather kind of like compress him against my body and then lift him up that way to make sure that he's not going anywhere. And like I said, this way he's fine. I mean, I, I don't know if that's a proper way to do it or not. I, I don't know. I never taken classes on it. But that's what I do just in case my wrist does give up. Because I don't trust my wrist at all. Even at work, I don't trust it. I've hurt people at work because of my wrist. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, but it's kind of sad. And I, how, how, I, how would you hurt people with your I'm sorry, um, I don't understand that bar, I'm sorry. On the maintenance, since mm -hmm. I do maintenance at Kmart and stuff, I take care of all the garbages and I change everything out in the toilets and I go off, and when you're doing garbages, they tend to get a little heavy and when my wrist gives out, I'll push the cart away from me without even trying to, it'll, it'll bump into somebody. Or I'll be changing out uh, the red bins underneath the uh, cash registers, and it, when my wrist gives out, I'll end up dropping the whole entire red bin everywhere, and it'll bounce off something and hit somebody or whatever. I've done it a couple of times. And then not in my brightest moments. Most embarrassing? Yes. Brightest? No. But I do apologize for it. Tell them my wrist gave out, and I'm sorry for the inconvenience and whatever have you. I mean, everyone can obviously see the scars on my wrist. What happened? Um, that one was from working at Johnny Rockets when I cut myself. That one was when I <laughs> got cut at a different job site. And that one is when I put my hand through a window when I was 9 or 10. And that one right there is when I got pissed off at one of my exes a couple of years ago. And thought I'd be tough and put my knife through my wrist try to get some anger out and it didn't exactly work. It more or less pissed me off even more and it made me bleed and it really hurt. And no. Never doing that again. Ever. A crying baby can be a challenge. It can, but the way I see it is that it it is just the way I see a work day. That and you guys will probably think I'm really weird for saying this, but 
no matter how bad a day can get, it always ends. Always ends. It, it, it's always got to stop at one point in time. And no matter how fussy a baby can get, eventually they're going to get tired enough to where they're going to fall asleep again. Or you can feed them, and that's what they want. Or just like holding them, they're quiet. Just the smallest things is what they want. It doesn't bother me to hear a screaming baby. I hear it all day at work. All day at work. So it doesn't bother me. I hear people complain. I hear people moan and groan over the stupidest shit. Over two whole dollars. That something costs them two fucking dollars and they got a bitch about it. I, I mean, I, I picked up after kids in the bathroom while they're still in there thinking it's funny. Shitting all over the toilet and I gotta pick it up. And I gotta clean the bathroom. And they think it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, I get mad. But I laugh it off. Because <laughs> the day ends anyway. Who thinks it's hilarious? Oh, everyone. Everyone. If I take, I took yesterday off, and I know I'm going to hear it today. I know I am, especially when I go back to work. Do you think that they, they look down on you at work because of what you do? or? I, I, honestly, I really don't know. And, I mean, she's gone in there with a the baby on more than one occasion. And, I mean, they all know that we were together. They all know that I was taking care of the baby and everything. And... I mean, one of the girls that works there, she was completely rude to her for no reason at all. And I even told her, I was like, that's just the way she is, you know. She's like, well, that's not even fair. She needs a change. Like, it's just who Brittany is, you know. Mm -hmm. you got to get used to the way she is and if you're going to be around her, you know. And at work, it's just different. When I'm at work, I'm there to work. I'm not there to socialize. I'm not there to have... I mean, yeah, we all have fun and whatever, and I talk with them. But when I'm called to a spill or when I'm called to fix something or do something, I'm all over it. I don't waste any time. I am right there. Just like I told her, I'll be for that baby. If there's anything wrong with that child, let me know. If I got the money, I'll be there. If you need a babysitter, let me know. If I can do it before work, fine. If not, it's got to wait until after work. I, I can't skip out on work because you need a babysitter. I can't do it. You know? And she's like, well, you know, what do I do for a babysitter, you know, if I can't find one? I don't know what to tell you. I, I can't give you an answer. I have to go to work. I can't just call off because you need a babysitter. The week that she stayed at my sister's house, she needed a ride back and forth to go get Wick and to uh, go shopping and pick up baby clothes and go pick up baby formula. No one had, no one wanted to give her a ride because she didn't have gas money. And she wanted me to stay home with the baby and watch the baby. I can't. I have to go to work. My sister's like, Britt, I gotta go to work. I can't stay here either. You know, like we both have a full time job. We cannot stay here. So Brittany was at the house. I get home, she didn't go anywhere for six fucking hours. Didn't do anything for six hours. And that drove me fucking insane. And I looked at her and said, how can you not get anything done? So I'm at work, no formula, no diapers, and no one came to fucking help you? With a two-month-old baby, no one came to fucking help you. Are you serious right now? You're going to tell me that no one came here to help you with that child? No, because everyone wanted gas money. Why do I not fucking believe that? Why do I not believe that when you had the fucking stroller in my sister's room, car seat's right there, you could have walked your ass anywhere to get help, and you didn't want to do it? Why is that? Because you're fucking lazy. Because you don't want to do anything. You can't hold on a fucking job. And she expects me to fucking bend over backwards. I'm not bending over backwards for anyone unless you fucking deserve it, period. And I'm not going to take responsibility for something I didn't do. I'm not going to go down for someone when they know they did wrong. I mean, I have no problem being there for people and helping people out, but when it comes to this shit, it really does aggravate me and sends me over the edge, but I don't get mad at it. I, I can't get mad because it's not worth getting mad at. So she, she's out at Cumbies, and the baby was, you said, like, I think 15 minutes was kind of fussy. We think about 15, 20 minutes was kind of fussy. Um, no. That was like screaming at the top of his lungs, kind of. Thing. He would, he would. Uh, I would hold him, and he would just. I would, I would pat him on the back, just doing whatever I could, and he just lay his head back and pow right into my ear. And I was like, oh come on, buddy. you really gotta stop, like come on, buddy. like come on, you really gotta stop. And he'd do it again and again and again. I'm like, oh. I'm like, I really can't wait for your fucking mom to get here, so you can scream in her ear and piss her off. And that's all. And, 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 and I know that's not his fault. It's but not you laid him out. Um, I, I would, I would, I would pick him up the same way that 
everyone else does. At least that's the way I, I, I think everyone else does. I more or less grab him right by the nipple area with my thumbs, and I grab him by the back, and I never go underneath the armpits, ever. I was always told never to do that just in case because the baby could slip right out of your hands. So I don't do that. So I, when I pick him up off my chest, I had him by the nipple area, and my fingers were completely separated on his back. And I, would, I went just like this, set him down, lay him down like that, and that way I went like this to his head, turned his head sideways, that way he could breathe. That way I didn't snap his neck, and that way I didn't hurt him. Took his legs, stretched his legs out, and all I do is I put my hands on his back and just went like this. That's all I would do. Was he still crying? He, he was, but after a while, he let out a couple of burps, and then he was still crying, and he got really bad to where I had to stop, because I couldn't tell if he was breathing or not, and I didn't know if I hurt him, and I had to check down, and I had to like, lift his head up, and there was a pile of drool on my pant leg. I'm like, okay, well, at least I know you're drooling like crazy, and at least I know you're breathing. And he started fussing again, because I stopped. Was he, like, was he thrashy? No, not really. He, it, when when I bounce him and I'm like this, he's really calm and he's really still. And that's what really scares me. Because I didn't know if I heard him or not. Because I didn't know if I crushed his lungs or if I hurt him or if I was bouncing him too hard and I, and I hurt his neck or something. I, I mean, I stopped because I, I was freaked out. I didn't want her coming home with all my fucking kids dead because you don't know how to take care of a baby. No. Did, did you think there was a time that he stopped Yeah. Breathing? Did he stop breathing? No. Because he was, he was just breathing nice and slow and that's what scared me because when I am bouncing him I couldn't tell I was like okay yep 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 and then about a couple minutes ago I'm like are you even fucking alive anymore like did I kill you or some shit and then he was like crying I'm like oh okay well you're obviously still alive so apparently I just pissed you off again and I go right back to doing it and then he constantly drool and then every once in a while I hear a burp or he fart I'm like okay I know that must have hurt I mean when you don't go to the bathroom for a couple of days it hurts I know it does you're right you know, constipation sucks. And that's why I asked him, like, has he, how how long has he been constipated for? So it's oh, a couple of weeks. And you don't go get your fucking son checked out when he doesn't take a shit for a couple of days, let alone a couple of weeks. Are you serious? Was there a time that you thought that he stopped breathing? Yeah. There, there was. That's why I, when, when I was bouncing like this, I would stop. And I didn't feel anything. I didn't hear anything. I was like, oh, shit. Oh fuck, maybe I bounced him too hard. And I just try to remain calm, like, okay, just don't freak the fuck out. Just relax, he's okay. And I would roll him over, and that's when he would freak out, because I moved him. And that's how I knew that he was awake. I had to physically move him in a different position to see if he was okay. I was freaked out. I, I, I didn't want to hurt him at all. I, I didn't want to kill him, I didn't want to fucking do, I didn't even want to touch him. I really didn't, I just wanted to leave him there. Honestly, I didn't want to fucking touch him anymore. Did, did you think that you heard him? Yeah. How? Just by bouncing him. Um, I, I've been told that you can crack ribs, that you can punch your ribs, that you can break their neck, that you can, you know, break their spine even, because they're so fragile. And I'm like, I, just holding him there and just not feeling anything for a couple of seconds, I was like, he's dead. Like, oh my god, like, I just killed a fucking two-month-old child. Like, I'm freaking out. I mean, I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, what do I do? So I would roll the baby over, and then he would start freaking out. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's a little bit relieved. Now I can go back to bouncing a little bit, you know? And then, you know, I'm bouncing, bouncing, and, and I'm like, alright, well, you know, maybe, you know, I'll stop. Stop, look down, and he's almost completely out cold. And I know that because I lean over, and I put my hand right next to his mouth. And I feel it. I'm like, okay, cool. I know he's sleeping. Sweet. And I don't know where, boom! He wakes right the fuck up because he's not being balanced anymore and he's pissed. I'm like, okay, well, I know you're mad, so whatever. So I was like, okay, well, you know, maybe you need your diaper changed. Maybe was he crying again? No, he was just kind of like, eh, eh, kind of like, kind of like, kind of like, kind of like being like fussy. Like he, kind of like he was trying to go to the bathroom, but he couldn't do it. Kind of like he was trying to push it out, but was just, mm -hmm. it, he just couldn't do it because he didn't have enough strength or something. And, I was like, okay, well, either you're trying to go to the bathroom and you can't do it, or you're starting to get fussy again and you're going to start crying. And he, he kind of made a couple of whimpering sounds. I'm like, okay, maybe you want your bottle, maybe you're hungry. You know, you did burp a couple of times, maybe you're hungry. So, you know, I lifted him up like I, you know, always want to do, right from underneath the chin, back to the head, lifted him right up, completely surrounded, and laid him in my shoulders. 
just like this, lean him back down, get him comfortable, and put the baby, you know, in the bottle in his mouth, and feed him that way. He took it with no problem. I was like, okay, so I know I burped you a couple of times, so you're not false anymore, you're completely okay, you're fine, sweet, no problem. I've asked Matt and Brittany on more than one occasion what the mark on his shoulder was. It was new to me, I didn't see it before. And it looked just like a fucking seven. Like a seven. Where was it? I mean, if you use your own shoulder, where did you see it? Um, Roughly way around here. Okay. And it looked just like a seven. So, well, we'll take a little back up a little bit. So you you do the the bouncing, and did your at any time during that did you feel your wrist give out? Um, I didn't so much give out. It was going tingly on me, so I know it was gonna start acting up, and like I do that every once in a while to pop it, and I I was bouncing with one hand. And I, I had to constantly do this, and then once I felt that pop, I was like, okay, cool. So How I, did you compensate for not having the other hand there? Did um, you use your body? I more or less, I, I really didn't like doing it, but I just spread my fingers out, and I was just going like this, and he was starting to slide. So I was trying to hurry up and really crack my, I was like, okay, cool, and I would move him back up. Did he, did he almost go over? He, he was starting to, and I stopped him, and my hand was still on his, my hand was still on his back, and when I noticed he was still starting to go over, I took him by the, by the side of the stomach and just gently moved him back. Just didn't squeeze or anything like that, just... Whoop. Is he fidgety though when you're doing no. hard to control? No he's, he, mean, no, he's a really good baby when you move him. He's really not fidgety at all. He has no problem being taken care of at all. He really doesn't, especially being bounced around. For a kid, for a two month old, he loves being bounced. He really does, and that's what really scares me. And I told her that. I'm like, I really don't like bouncing him, but it's the only thing that he likes. The only thing that makes him fall asleep is being bounced. And that's why she puts him in his bouncer. And she'll rock him back and forth. And his head will constantly go like this. It'll bounce right off the back. Every time. And he goes to sleep that way. So you eventually get him back up and cradle him? I get him back up, cradle him in my arms, put the bottle in his mouth, and I'm holding him there. And he's fine, no problem. Mm -hmm. And he lets me drink it too fast. And Brittany's noticed it, Matt's noticed it, I've noticed it. He doesn't take his time. And I don't know if I'm putting the bottle too far in his mouth, not far enough in his mouth, but it just seems like he constantly spits up the formula. Constantly. So it's like, okay, so I take it out, I wipe his mouth out, and then he gets cranky again because he took the bottle out of his mouth. So I try to put it back in his mouth, and then he started whining again, started crying again. And I was like, okay, you know, mommy's going to be back really soon, I can hope, and I'm like, you know, it's been a while. Well, it doesn't take that long to walk the tummies and walk back. Well, that's probably going to be a 15, 20 minute walk there, depending on how fast you walk. I mean, they really should have been back by now. They really should have. How were you feeling? Paranoid. Honestly, because everyone keeps saying that Matt and her have been sleeping around together. What, what, what was bothering you about her not being back with them? The fact that I got left with her kid. For her saying it's her kid and that no one else is going to take care of it and this, that, and the other thing. Did you think maybe something was wrong with that kid? Not really, because, I mean, he's all fine and he's content, but what really bothered me, and I brought her attention, I brought her Matt's attention, and I think this is why I'm being looked at, honestly, because I said something, but it doesn't bother me, because I'm not fucking scared. I asked him, what is that mark on his shoulder? Why is there a mark on his shoulder? And it was only on one shoulder. How did it come to be you saw that mark? And did you see it before they got home? No, I didn't see it before they got home. It was probably the next day is when I stopped over at Matt's again and he had a baby in his arms or was putting the baby down, I can't even remember and I said, bud, what's that mark on his arm? He's like, what mark? I'm like, that one right there, what's that, like, two little marks on his arm? I'm like, that looks like a seven. Kind of weird. And Matt looked over at Bernie and Matt's like, probably from the car seat? He goes, yeah, probably from the car seat. I'm like, are you guys sure that's from the car seat? I'm like, that doesn't look like it's from the car seat. So, well, where is it? So, it's up, on, it's up by his shoulder blade area. So, it's always oh, probably from his car seat. It's probably too tight, or someone's probably taking him out too rough. Okay. I know I haven't taken him out of any fucking car seat, let alone out of any car. So, hmm. Where did the mark come from? And 
it took her this long to do something about it? Which is what I don't understand. Because Matt even told me yesterday, when Matt came back to the job and told me what happened, because he stopped in earlier and saw me. No, not yesterday, dude. For that, because I yesterday off. Yes, I took yesterday off. Today's Monday. So, Saturday. I was at work, and Matt comes rushing over to me and goes, Hey, we well, need to talk. I said, about what? It was the baby. I said, okay, what about the baby? He goes, the baby's got two broken fucking collarbones. Really? Now, how did that happen? Because I wasn't there until Wednesday, bud. So, <laughs> Monday through Wednesday, that's on you guys, not on me. I wasn't even around. So, what's going on now? Within a three within a three day span of me not being there, and then two days of me being there, all of a sudden now I've got two broken collar bones. Well, was Wednesday the day they went to get the cigarettes? Yeah. And that was, was the day that you were bouncing. Wednesday is the day that I had just stopped in to see how Matt was doing. Because Matt didn't get out of the hospital until Monday morning. You were bouncing on Wednesday. Okay. I was bouncing so on Wednesday gone. night, yeah. Okay, so they come home. Was there any talk about any marks on that? No, I, r I really didn't see anything. Honestly, I was really tired. Um, I was really pissed off because it really took me that long. I was like, what took you so long? You know, like, it doesn't take you that long to walk there and walk back. And she's like, oh, well, you know, me and Matt were talking, da da da, and we were just really talking a lot. I'm like, that's a really long conversation I had then. For that long, but almost an hour walk? So that, 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 that seems kind of weird to me. She goes, what's weird? And Matt's like, what? I'm like, no, nah, I'm not saying nothing, but I'm not, I'm not just saying. It only doesn't take that long to walk to come and walk. Hey, that's fine. That's all I'm saying. And I really didn't think twice about it, honestly. Did you tell her the baby was acting up while she was gone? I told her the baby was fussy every once in a while, and she's like, yeah, tell me something I don't know. And I was like, well, you know, baby was fussing every once in a while. Didn't mind his bottle. I tried to do it to calm down. I was bouncing him on my knees. I mean, she's watched me do it. She's watched me bounce to him on my knees. Just be careful. I know. I got this. Don't worry. He's okay. He's not... You hear him freaking out? You hear him crying right now? No. He's fine. You're okay. And that was about it. I mean, I was taking care of the baby until he got back. They got back and... handed the baby off and I was like, I gotta go. And she's like, why? I'm like, because I gotta go home. I have shit to do tomorrow. Jessica wants to talk to me. I gotta go home. Do you know what time you left? Probably around, I would say 10.30ish, because my sister wasn't even home. She ended up staying somewhere else. So you left about 8.30, got back about 9.30? They left about 8.30, got back around like 4 after 9, 9.30ish, yeah. And then I bounced about an hour later because we were watching a movie. And the baby was completely fine. Completely content. I mean, no problem, not fussy, not nothing. Where, where was the baby then when you was um, it in the couch or in the bed or crib? Did have a crib for the baby? No. Have no crib? And she doesn't have anything for the baby when she's at Matt's house. And that's what really bothers me is that for a two month old baby, she sleeps with him. And that's what really bothers me the most. Because honestly, maybe she heard the baby in her sleep and she doesn't realize it. Did you want something to drink? I would love something to drink. Did you want one of these? I don't care. I, okay. I can't afford one right now. I'm broke. Yeah, we're good. You got it.
Fruit juice. The fuck is that shit?
hate on them. Holy shit. See how my cell phone's off. How, um, hmm. So I gotta talk to my sister to see if I can stay at her house anymore. Why wouldn't it? Um, because someone ran their mouth telling my sister that I didn't believe her about certain things in the past, and she more or less told me to get the fuck out of her house this morning. Oh, well, maybe with a little bit of time she'll cool down about that. And well, that's what I'm hoping to talk about. Why pick time. at it at this point, right? Yeah, exactly. Sometimes if you let things settle and maybe do your work day or whatever I'm later hoping, on. I'm hoping she's going to think about it. And she'll, she might settle down. And yeah. If you start asking her about it, she'll get angry and it'll, it'll start the well, conversation I'm all over <laughs> again, you know what I mean? I don't know if she doesn't want me on because my clothes will be fucking packed up and so on my shit. Well, that, then you'll have your answer, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it, Bob. All right. Um, one quick thing. Just wanted to um, 
you know, having you here for a little longer than a couple minutes, all right? Yeah, just wanted to read this to you. Yeah. Um, I have to read you the thing that we're talking like this about, about this, all right? Obviously, I'm sure you've heard this a million times on TV, but um, still just needed to read it to you just to cover my bases anyway. Okay. Um, that you have the right to remain silent, refuse to answer any questions, and anything you do say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to stop answering questions at any time you desire. You have the right to talk to a lawyer to remain silent if you can talk to him, to have him present when you're being questioned. Desire lawyer of the kind of forum will be provided to you without cost. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. You understand? Yeah. Okay. Um, just need you to initial that this is the card that we read. Mm -hmm. Remember my name or just you? anywhere. Just to basically just acknowledge that that's the one. Okay. Um, so you think she's going to be angry that you um, you guys have this fight and all and. Um, uh, it's just from the past that it got brought up, Matt got involved, Brittany's involved now, and with this whole entire thing again, I mean, it, it, it just doesn't make, you know, me look good, and it doesn't make anyone else look good, and with my past, it, it's been rough, mm -hmm. and it, I really can't deny anything that's happened about my past, because it's obviously my past, but... What's your past? That's, that would bother Every, me. Everyone thinks that I let things get to me too quick, and they really don't know anything about me until they talk it out. Mm -hmm. They really don't. I mean, I get I get frustrated, and I get upset, and I get mad, but I don't act on it. You know, I, I try not to think twice about anything, and if I do, then it's just going to frustrate me even more. Yeah. And I try, I mean, I, I end up smashing something Friday night because Brittany pissed me off so bad, I, I smashed a lamppost instead of hitting her. I mean, with, with your bare hands? With, with my, yeah, just smashed it because I was that pissed off. And that's the first time in a long time I've ever hit anything because of a female. What was that over? Her. Just her being all mad at me for no reason because I didn't want to talk to her. I was trying to calm myself down because I was drinking. She wanted to yank me out of the bar. I was like, I don't want to talk to you right now. You're drunk. I'm drunk. I don't want to talk to you. I want to calm down and cool down. And two of the bartenders were like, Brittany, you need to leave him alone. He's obviously pissed off. Leave him alone. So when I left, I went home with a couple, I uh, walked up my friends down, um, where um, the, um, the Madden used to be, yep. right, right behind that building where the big parking lot is and stuff. Yeah, that's well, I walked down there, then uh, down by uh, the old uh, Boston Candy Kitchen, and that building has got the four lamp poles right there. I, I couldn't hold it in no more. I was just, it was just dwelling now in my brain. I just, oh, I just unleashed and. I just smashed it. I was like, now I feel better. Now I'm not gonna. <laughs> and I don't, now I don't feel so angry. Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, just, just stuff that she just does. It just gets to me to where I need to walk away. If I don't, I'm gonna smash something. And it's gotten to that point to where I've been wanting to hit her, and I'm like, I can't hit you. If I do that, then it's assault. I'm going to jail. I'm not going to jail for you. I'm not losing my job because of you. I'm not doing it. And she honestly expects me to hit her because all of her other boyfriends have abused her. Mm -hmm. And I refuse to. And she doesn't understand that. I'm not going to do it. And it's just not in me. I'd rather hit something else than hit her. And I'm not going to put myself through it. It's not worth it. Yeah. At all. And I told Jessica that. I'm like, I, I don't know what to expect. You know, they told you whatever they want to tell you and you're going to believe them over me. Someone who you barely even know you're going to believe that over your own flesh and blood. Fine, whatever. You know, it's your call. You know, it's over that last money. She got all pissed off at me, too. I was like, what well, I'm going to say? I can tell you no to your face a thousand times, and will you believe me or not? That's up to you. You know, if you believe what Brittany wants to say, fine. Believe what Brittany wants to say. You've known her for a whole fucking week. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. You believe in someone over your own family. You know, her own brother, her other brother, wants her ex-girlfriend. And she's paranoid about that. I don't want her. I've already told her that she's her ex, but I don't want nothing to do with her. You know, we're just friends. You know, that's it. You know, period. I'm not going to try and do anything with her. And, I mean, her other brother has tried to kick her out of her room, do this, do that. And it's like, really? And then you think I'm the asshole here? <laughs> like, really? I'm the bad guy all the time? Whatever, bud. I, I, I tell her they don't care. I really don't. Her opinion's her opinion. It is what it is. And, unfortunately, I'll find out today if she wants me there or not. If not, then you've got to make a couple phone calls. It's going to be real interesting to do again. I'm sure it'll work out. I hope it does. I really do. Because if it doesn't, I'm so screwed.
Simple as that. And then feed them. If he was hungry, I'd try to bottle. If not, then I would just go like this once again. And that way I would land back down and go right back at it. How long did this go? Um, I would do it periodically for about 15, 20 minutes, randomly. And just it, it, it just I just do it out of blue because I think it really calms them down a little bit. So I would just. So was it two times of 15 minutes, three times of 15 minutes? Um, I would do it for about 10, 15 minutes at a shop. Just to how many? How many times? Um, two, three times, if that. But nothing too major, nothing too severe to where I didn't really want to cause you know neck damage or brain trauma from all the bouncing or any bodily injuries or anything like that, so I'll just, you know, for a little bit, keep going, my legs will be going completely numb, and that's, that's all I'll be doing, is just, you're okay, you're okay. When your wrist gave out, how do you compensate for that? Um, like my wrist was starting to give out, and it would, my wrist was just completely like, ah, uh, yep, okay, that really hurts, and then I would just gently vibrate it, while I'm still holding him in place with my left hand, and I would cuddle my body around my whole entire hand. This way my chest is touching my hand, but my hand's touching him. This way I'm not completely suffocating him. And if I felt like I was, then all I would do is lean up. Were you leaning against him harder than that? No, just like this. Just, just, how, uh, just, just enough to hold him. I was just going to say, you described that earlier as compressing him. Compressing him, um, holding him down, I really hate using compressing, but I mean, it's like the best word to use. I would just hold him down until my hand felt better, and then once it felt better, I would just lean back up and just hold him like that and just keep patting him. I mean, I hate using the word compress because it sounds so dangerous, but it's the only way I know the best way I can describe it. I would compress his body against mine. Not, not hard enough to where it would hurt him, but hard enough to where it would be like, okay, you're completely still, you have no movement, you can't move on your own. I have complete control of your body right now. You're completely in my care, you can't move. So you're fine. And then I would lean right back, and I would go right back at it. If I thought my wrist was okay, then it would be fine. If he started slipping, I would be like, no, 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 come on, come on. And then I would go right back at it. And then I would stop. And then, you okay? Yeah, you okay, okay. And then, he, it, I mean, they would make him pass out completely. Just make him go right to sleep. And then I would... Okay. Well, you're asleep, but whatever. I'll keep going, and that would be about it. I mean, Was there a time you thought the baby was dead? There is, because I didn't feel anything. And when I stopped to check, I would lean forward like that, and I would move my feet back and forth to make sure that I had different elevation in my legs, because I could tell, because my legs go down. Instead of going up, my legs would go down, and I would lean forward, and I'm like, okay, I don't like that, I, I can't tell if he is, so I would put my legs back up, and then I would lift his head up, and I'm like, okay, you're okay, you're fine. Why would you think he, he was dead? Because he, he wouldn't move when I stopped. Like, if I, with, with going like this and bouncing him and everything like that, and then, you know, patting him on the back, it, he just got so comfortable, and his legs weren't moving, he wasn't doing anything, and it freaked me out. It, it, I, it honestly scared me, that's why I stopped, I'm like, okay, you're not doing anything, your legs aren't moving, you're not breathing in, you're not doing nothing. So I was just gently with his head up, and he's like, okay, well, you know, I don't see anything, and I would listen to make sure he was breathing. And if I couldn't feel or anything, or tell if anything, I would try and wake him up. I would, I would just rub his back, and... I would, I would try to aggravate him enough to make a, to make a noise, try to try to get him awake, you know, try to make him do something to let me know he was okay. Did that scare you at all? It did, because I don't want I, I don't want to lose a baby in my care, because if that happened to me, then that would happen to my if that was my own son, that would kill me, that would destroy me inside and out. And having it just be, I mean, his son, your son, I mean, it, just having someone else trust me with their kid just proves that they trust me enough to be, like, a dad. You know, okay, well, you can't, you know, you don't have your own kids, but here's, you know, here's a child that you can treat like your own. Did you feel like you panicked at all? I did, I, and I know I did. I, I freaked out, and I was like, oh, my God, you're, you're not doing anything. Like, what's going on? Like, are you, are you okay? Uh, are, you, are you breathing? Like... Hey, like, come on, talk to me here. Like, hey, come on. And then, you know, I just roll him over and I would look into his eyes to make sure that his eyes were moving. 
At least if I couldn't see him take a breath in or hear it, I could at least see his eyes. If his eyes were at least somewhat moving, then I knew he would still be at least. I, I really don't like because I I don't know if I, I don't know if I knocked him out unconscious. If I shook him hard enough to where you know he stopped breathing, if I closed off his airway, what I I don't know if I did anything wrong or not, and you know just like okay well you know are you still breathing you know can you breathe you know and he would look at me and that's how I know okay you were fine you're okay and I put my hand right back on his butt and then right back on his back and then I just start patting him again and then if he didn't like it I would stop pop him and go just like that. And that way I would feed him or do whatever I needed to do. Um, how could it be that you felt like maybe you knocked him unconscious? Um, because the way that he is is that when he moves his head around, it, it's kind of like a bobblehead kind of motion that he does. And even even when you're holding him like this, he kind of looks all the way around and he kind of moves on it and he kind of like snaps his head back and kind of does this. So it's like you really got. It's like okay, I'm really trying to hold you still right now but you're kind of like fighting me here, you know, and when he snaps his head back, it, like that, it, it really bothers me, it's like, okay, you're doing this on your own, to try and break free my grit, but I don't want you to hurt yourself in the same aspect, so as I'm bouncing him on, on my knees and stuff, and his head's right here, his head's to the side, you know, and it, it's, his neck's still vulnerable, you know, and, and it's like, okay, you know, I'm bouncing him, I'm bouncing him, I'm bouncing him, it only takes one bounce to to, da to do any damage, and I, I mean, I'm not a doctor. I don't know how severe it would have to be to do that, but I mean, everyone tells me, oh, even doing this can give a you know baby shake and baby syndrome. I didn't know that. Like I didn't like I don't know how hard you have to shake a baby to get shake and baby syndrome. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't know the you know the whole darn thing, you know. And so just shaking him like this, it really scary because I didn't know if you know if he snapped his neck going down or. If you know if he was looking and it, you know like cracked his neck or something or or what have you, I, I you know I, I just don't know what was going on. You know he's so small and so you know fragile that anything could happen. I mean I could crush his lungs or something just by shaking him. I mean I don't know. I mean that's so why I, I that's why I don't like taking care of babies, but I do because it gives me the experience to take care of them. But it also freaks me out because I'm not a professionist at it. I don't know what to expect. You know, she's got three kids total. She's been through it. You know, she knows what to do, what not to do. You know, you're giving someone a two-month-old who's never had kids in his life, <laughs> let alone taking care of a baby. Mm -hmm. And you, I'm trying my hardest to do what I think is right here. And, you know, I'm trying to burp him and everything else. And, you know, it's like, okay, you know, what do I do? And then he just doesn't move for a little bit. It's like, you're still alive, right? <laughs> like I didn't hurt you, right? Like okay, you're you know you're good, like you're okay. And then just he would eventually just pass out. And I was like, okay, you're eventually passed out. This is kind of cool. You're sleeping. This works. Okay. So that let's see if I can try and lay you down without you freaking out. And then I would try to figure out the best way to roll him over without hurting him. And what I would do is I would take my hand, cup it by his shoulder blade and by his rib cage, and I would take the other hand and I would throw it over like how this one is, and then I would just gently roll him over, and then I would move my hand away from his side and cup his head. And this way I could roll him over and lift him up like that. And like this way his head's secure, it's in my shoulder, his whole entire body's fine, and nothing's wrong with him. At least this way, and if, if, if anything does get out, like my hand does get out, at least this way, he's fine, he's curled up in my elbow. At least this way, I'm not worried about any neck damage, I ain't got to worry about, you know, dropping him or anything. And that that's, you know, the best way I fear that I would, you know, be able to get him, is if I cut him like this, and then just gently <coughs> roll him over. That'd be the best, that, that's the best way I thought to get him to stay asleep without waking him up. Instead of just, you know, oh, come here, now you're fine. You know, no, I'm not going to, you know, do that. At least I, I don't do that. You know, I don't know what anyone else does, but I roll them over and cut them in my arm. You know, I would support the head and everything, and 
do whatever I, what I needed to do to make sure that the baby was okay. And he was fine. The whole entire time I was doing that, I mean, he was completely and utterly okay. With no problem. And it's clear one thing up too. When when um, when they left to go to Cumberland Farms, mm -hmm. where was the baby? The baby was on the bed. Okay. The baby was on the bed. So they left, and then at some point you I get him. I, I heard him. I heard him this. crying, and I went to check up on him. And as he was cr as he was laying down in the bed, he was in the um the uh, donut pillow, and he was covered up. I moved the blanket, put my hand underneath his head, and as he was laying there, I took him like this, picked him up, put him inside my shoulder, and picked up the pillow, and brought everything onto the couch. And that way I still had him, and I was still patting him on the bed, and that's, I was, I sat right on the couch, that way I could lean back, something soft, and that way, just in case he did fall over or roll off, the couch would stop him. That way I had something soft enough to where my legs were my legs would be here, couch would be right here, he would be right here. Just to make sure that it was enough bounce, but not on my on my bones, not on the kneecaps. I didn't want to hurt him like that. So I put him right here, and that way when I would, when I was bouncing him, at least this way now, you know, he's, he's only getting the small tremors, mm -hmm. nothing too major. And that's what I would do. I would just sit there and I would bounce him, and that way the pillow's right here, just in case he does slide off, that way his head gets stopped, and I can move him back. Mm -hmm. And that way I can take care of him. And that way he's okay, he's fine, and he can lean his head whichever way he wants to, and the TV was still going, so he could even look at the TV if he wanted to, periodically. So I, that's what I would do. So how long after they leave do you um, um, cry and pick him up? He, after a while, if it wasn't working, and he'd get fussy, and just... No, no, I'm saying he's laying on the bed. They leave to go get cigarettes. How much longer oh, after um, they leave? After they leave, left, maybe, maybe five, ten minutes, roughly, about that. He 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 knows when she's gone, which is kind of weird because she has, like when she comes back, he knows. But he could be sleeping and have a dead sound sleep, and then boom, once she comes in the door, he wakes right up and he knows it's her, which is kind of weird, but it's kind of cool. I think it's both, but it's. It is what it is, I guess. But, I mean, he was completely fine, just laying down, relaxing, and when he wakes up, he just starts crying. Mm -hmm. he, he wants to be picked up and held, and when you go to put him down, he does not like being put down. Did he try to put him down at some I, point? I tried to put him down a couple of times so I could go to the bathroom, but it didn't work. <laughs> so I more or less had to hold it <laughs> until he got back, mm -hmm. which is all I was kind of like upset about because I really had to go. And I was like, you know, I'm very, you know, they've been gone for a long time, you know, like, what's going on? You know, like, I'm taking care of the baby, they're not back yet, and I'm like, you can't even, I can't even go to the bathroom, because I don't want to leave the baby by himself, you know, I'm like, bad enough, I leave the baby. Tissue there, buddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, please do. Oh, yeah, please do. Okay. You know, it's like, I, it, it just bothered me that they were gone for that long. It really did. But I'm not going to accuse her or anything, because she doesn't accuse me. <laughs> That's what you were thinking too. I think that maybe something was going on between them. Uh, so yes, I do. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna accuse her of anything without any proof. And without any proof, if you accuse someone of something, you're just making an ass out of yourself. Mm -hmm. So I let it be, and I really wasn't trying to think much of it. But it really was getting to me that maybe something was happening. Maybe, I mean, when I don't come around and she's with me, supposedly, but yet she's constantly happy all the time, this and that and other thing, it just kind of made me think of what might be going on mm -hmm. and what might not be going on. Because even if she's not sleeping with Matt, then Matt can still have someone that she wants to come over, come over to the house and... <clears throat> Brittany can pretty much tell him anything, oh, well, you know, it's just one of my good friends, and da 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 whatever have you, and go from there. You know, it's like, w what do I believe and what do I not believe? You know, do I believe that she's being faithful and honest? Or do I believe that, you know, everyone's saying that they think that her and Matt are doing stuff, or she might be doing stuff with someone else? 
it's kind of a catch one two scenario for me because I don't know what to believe and who to believe. But yeah, I'm always the asshole and I'm always the bad guy because I choose to believe everybody over myself. I will believe it if I can see it. Mm -hmm. If you tell me this is what happened, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and I'm going to believe you until proven wrong. If you're proven wrong, then I'm not going to believe what you said. Plain and simple. Mm -hmm. But she said that nothing happened, nothing's going on, and there's no proof to prove otherwise. So if she said that there's nothing going on, Matt says there's nothing going on, that's two against one. And did you ask her that that night? I, I really didn't want to, so I didn't. Cause I really didn't want to accuse her of anything, and I really didn't want to fight. Because I really hate arguing with the baby, because they're just... Getting loud is just not good for the baby at all, no matter how young or how old, it's just not good. Mm -hmm. So I tried to avoid that, and she's the one that brought it up to me first. She's like, yeah, well, apparently I'm sleeping with Matt now. I was like, really, who's saying that? And she's like, oh, everyone thinks that, you know, me and Matt are sleeping together, and I'm like, really? I'm like, that's fucking funny. And she's like, it's not funny, that's not funny, that's serious. I'm like, how is that not funny to you? Like, you can't laugh that off? Like, that's hilarious. You're being accused of sleeping with someone that is married, for one, and you already know you won't do anything with him, and you can't laugh that off? And she's like, no, that's fucking shit. Why? Why can't you laugh that off? If I'm laughing it off, why can't you? Why can't you just laugh that off? You're being accused of sleeping around my back when everyone knows that we're together, and I'm laughing it off. Do you have something to hide? Is that why you're being so serious about this? Or just because you don't want people to run their mouth about you? What's your answer? Well, people need to keep my name out their mouth and, okay, whatever, buddy. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to fucking start a fight over something that's not even true. So why even fight about it? Don't care. And it, it would just be stuff like that that she would bring to work. That she would bring to my job to talk about. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, apparently I'm sleeping with Matt. Did you know that? Did you know that? I didn't know, I, Matt, I didn't know that either, but apparently you're fucking bad because she doesn't remember. Apparently. And it's like, where does this come from? Like, why are you telling me this? I really don't care. Like, why do I need to know? As long as you're sleeping with me and that's all that I care about, why do I care what other people are saying? I don't. So why do you care? The answer would be nice, you know? Like, why do you care? Have you guys been romantic? Intimate? Lately? Well, since you've been seeing her. Yeah. Do you care for her? I care a lot about her and I care a lot for her. And... I really do like her a lot, and I really do want to be there. And this is the same thing I went through with my ex, because I really did care about her, and I really did like her, and I really did want to be there for her and the kids. And I already told Brittany that I really want to be there for her and the kids, but I can't be there if she doesn't let me in. If she doesn't allow me to be there for her and for her children, then how can I be there for her at all? I mean, the sex is different. That's just part of our relationship. But our relationship doesn't just stop there. It goes even farther and even deeper. And I and I really notice a change, and, and I'm really happy about it, too, because I really notice a really big change. And now that all this has come out, it went right away. The last two weeks that off and on, yeah, we have our tiffs and we have our arguments, but she really started coming around. You know, she started being, you know more joking, you know, laughing more, you know, just not as tense, not as built up, not as, you know, as, as tight as she needs to be, like she's letting her guard down a little bit, you know, like she's, you know, she's letting me there, but she's not letting me completely all the way in the door, you know, the door's cracking open, you know, inch by inch, and, you know, she's still behind it, holding it tight, but she's willing to, you know, gently open it. And I noticed that in her, and I really loved that. And I really did, and I really thought that was really cool. And then all of a sudden, boom, all this shit starts happening. It's like, wow, like, she was doing great. We were doing awesome. Yeah, Friday sucked because we got into an argument and whatever, but, like, I, what the hell? On a good day, how long does it take to walk from his apartment on the boulevard to come be some back. On a good day? Like today? Yeah. On uh, just a routine 15 walk. Fifteen minutes. Round trip. Half hour, if that. Round trip, there and back, depending on, on what you had to get. 
walking there for a pack of cigarettes and walking back just for a pack of cigarettes. Um, if the store was dead, just for a variable. The store was dead, she's the only one in there, coming back. 15, 25 minutes tops. So you would have thought she would have been back in 25 oh, minutes? Oh, yeah, I thought she would have been back in a half hour. Where did you think she was? Honestly, I don't know. All I know is that she was with Matt and she was walking to a store. Did so you think maybe they were... I Maybe they stopped off at a friend's house. Maybe they stopped off in the woods on a bike path because the bike trail is right behind his house to do... <coughs> anything. Anything and anything. I, I, she could have she could have gave him moral sex. She could have had sex with him. He could have ate her out. I, I, I don't know. I, it, it, were some these things going through your mind? They were. Honestly, I'm not going to lie about it. They were really... I mean, just having her tell me, oh, yeah, well, apparently me and Matt are sleeping together having that being told to me by her and then, you know, being cheated on and being lied to in the past. She's not exactly well known for having decent relationships. I think Russ will agree with me. You worked a full full work day and a pretty stressful job. Oh, I'm just you come home to a girl that you think you care about or you do care about her. She kind of dishes her kid off and it makes you think twice. Thinks she's going to be back in I think you said 25 minutes yeah. at best. And now she's not back and you've got a, a fidgety child. Yeah. That's a tough load for any guy. You're 24? I'm going on 24 next month. 23? So. For anybody. Any experienced father, boyfriend, whatever. Yeah. That's a tough... That's why I told her, you know, I'm not, you know, great with kids. I'm not completely, fully experienced, but I'm also willing to learn. You know, but I don't expect her to just dish the kid off to me and then, you know, when I can't get a hold of her, you know, what do you want me to do? You know, I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm going to, you know, assume that this is what I'm doing right. Did and you try to get hold of her? I, I couldn't. My cell phone was off. I have had I lost my phone on the 14th. So that must have added a little bit to the... It, it was because it was so stressful because my phone can still go off. Was able to still try to text me, so my brain tone still goes off. My phone keeps on telling me of insignificant funds to receive a message, which I don't care. And it's just like, okay, someone's trying to obviously get a hold of me. But I can't get a hold of anybody at all. And what I've noticed about her is that she controls Matt's phone. She takes it out of his hands. She wants to use it all the time. And Matt gets mad at that. Matt even snapped on her. While well, I'm waiting for my wife to call me, you you know you completely kill my battery off being on Facebook. Well, why are you letting her use your phone then? That's on you. Why are you letting her use your phone? You know I I don't trust too many people with my phone because it's my personal space. It's my phone. That's why I bought it, you know? And it's like, why am I going to give my phone to you to use when you obviously can't afford your own? I have more than one phone. All she's got to do is say, babe, can you put time on it for me? Yeah, no problem. No, she wants a fucking touchscreen phone. She wants this. She wants that. I can't provide that for her. But Matt can. Matt's got, a, you know, an Android phone. He's got a touchscreen phone. He's got Facebook on his phone. So it really does make me think twice of what he can give her and where I can. And, uh, you know, I really don't like accusing him of doing anything, but he's not exactly one known for staying completely honest to his wife. I've been there. I've lied for him. I've covered for him. I know the girls he's cheated on his wife with, and I still don't say anything. I'm not saying anything now because it's not my place. It's not my right. Now, if Sarah asks me, is my husband cheating on me? Yes. Period. Because you ask me a question, I'm not going to lie to you. Is he sleeping around? Yes. How do you know? Because I was there when he did it. Period. And Mac is saying that he doesn't want his marriage, he doesn't like who he's with, but yet he still wants his marriage to work out. Which is even more stressful on me because it makes me have to be look like a fucking liar. I'm not going to lie to you about something like that. That's just wrong. That's like you accusing me of stealing something from you. I'm not going to do that either. That's why I have a job. That's why I work. So I ain't got to worry about stealing from people. You know, that's why I work my ass off every day for a whole 35 fucking hour paycheck at the end of the week. I barely bring home 250 bucks a week. And she wants everything and anything off of that. So I can't provide what you want. You know, I can't get you, you know, three packs of cigarettes and, you know, your teas and, you know, this and that. When I can't even afford a fucking cell phone bill, it's only $50 a month. I can't afford that. Now. And I make plenty of money to be able to afford that, and I still can't. And that's why I don't understand. Well, we need diapers, we need wipes, we need formula. 
Well, why do you wait until you're almost out to say something? When you bring 20 of them with you, say, we only have 20, we need to make them last. No, she doesn't tell me anything. Oh, well, we only have two diapers left. And you didn't tell me yesterday when we were down to eight or nine that we don't have that many left? You had to wait until we had down to two? When we had no wipes, no formula, no nothing? Like, why didn't you tell me this a couple of days before so I could plan this shit out? Ask somebody. Get some results. Get some answers. Could have asked John. Could have asked Matt. No. She wants to wait until the last fucking minute. And that's what drives everyone nuts because she always waits until the last minute. And that's why I was really worried that night when they went to come in. It's like, okay, well, you know, I'm taking care of the baby by myself. You know, he doesn't want to sleep. He doesn't want to eat. He doesn't want to be laid down. He wants to be constantly held. I'm not trusting my wrist. She knows I have a bad wrist at that. And she still wants me to take care of the baby by myself. I don't know what to do if the baby starts coughing up. Like, what do I do? I, yeah, clean the mouth you know, wash his mouth out and whatever, but what do you do after that? I don't know what to get him. Like, I I don't know if he, the, the tummy stuff that he had to make his tummy stop break. I don't know how much to get him on that. Like, I could OD him on that stuff. You know, I could OD him on baby's tongue now. I don't know how much to give a child because I don't know what you want. How much do I give a child? This amount. Okay, no problem. I can do that. But you got to tell me. Can you just assume that I know how to, how to raise a fucking two-month-old? I don't have any idea. Never been through it. I don't have any kids of my own. I don't know what it's like to be up all hours of the night. Maybe once in a while when the baby doesn't want to go to bed. Yeah. Four o'clock in the morning the baby's screaming because, you know, of whatever. Then, yeah, I'll be up, you know, I'll take care of the baby and whatever. No problem. But eventually I'm going to need to get some sleep too. So you got to switch off and say, okay, get some sleep. I'll take care of the baby. You know, I told her, lay back down, I'll take care of the baby for a little bit, no problem at all. You know? And she's like, okay, cool. And taking care of the baby, the baby would not stop crying, would not stop freaking out. A anything I did, the baby just would not stop. So she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I don't know. Like, he won't stop. Like, what do I do? Like, I, you got, I'm lost here. Like, what do I do? I'm bouncing him, I'm patting him on the back, I changed him, what do I do? Like, I don't know where to go from here. Where am I going? You need to tell me. And it's... Is it right here? Nothing. Nothing in return. There's a blank face like, how the fuck do you not know what you're doing? Can you tell me so I know what I'm doing, please? And no, it's never good enough. She wasn't there, though, where you could ask her those questions. No, she wasn't, so I had to assume. That's for the frustration. I was like, what do I do? What, where am I going from here? What is there for me to do? So I did my best. I figured I would just keep bouncing him until they got back. And that's all I would do is just keep bouncing until I got back. And I was like, they really need to hurry up. They really need to fuck. And I mean, he's just, he doesn't want, he's just crying and he's just getting more mad and more mad. And it's like, what? I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. She's not back yet. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I tried setting him up, tried feeding him, tried holding him. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm just rocking him back and forth, and my arms going, "Come on, come on, you can do it." You know, you know, just relax, you're okay. You know, moving him down like this. You know, rocking him back and forth, and it, nothing's working. I don't know what to do. I mean, he's he's kicking. And I mean, he's uh, ear piercing noises. It's just like, buddy, what do you want me to do? I don't know where to go from here. Like, what do I do? You know, like, you know, like I, I don't know what's wrong with you. Like, what do you want me to... And he just won't stop. And it's like, what do I do to make you happy again? You know, how do I make you a happy two-month-old? Well, how do I make... Uh, yeah, you know, I try to... You know, I talk to him. Like, what do I do to make you, you know, to make you happy again? What do I do? What do you want? Look him right in the face. Yeah, yeah but... Him. Yeah, like, what do you want, buddy? Like, you know, like, what do you want? And, you know, I'll, you know, I'm just like, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? And I'm just... It's, it's like, what, what does this kid want? Like... God, tell me where he wants. I just give it to him. What does he want? And it, it, it just won't stop. And I'm like, oh my God. Did you turn him and look him right in the I'm, face? I'm like, I'm like, I would turn him like this, and then I would hold his arm. That way, you know, this way, if, if my wrist does give out, and his head does snap this way, at least my left hand's underneath him. At least this way, I got control of him. And that's what scared the hell out of me. It's knowing the fact that if my arms give out, and he goes down, he's going down by himself. And I can't stop it.
Are you overcompensating on the other hand? I, a little bit probably, yeah, because of my, the way my wrist is. And when I grabbed him, I went like this, and I was like, buddy, I was like, buddy, come on, you just, you know, you just got to be quiet, you know. And I would always put my thumbs right by his nipples and spread my fingers open. That way I have control, complete control of his back. And I was like, you got to He's still screaming. He's still screaming. It's like, buddy, you got you to gotta calm down. Buddy, yeah, I, I know. I know. You're upset. I know. You gotta be okay. You're gonna be okay. And then you know, I'll start rubbing his back. You know, pinning his back. And then he start, you know, splashing on. It's like, oh, come on, come on. You know, come on. You're, you know, you're okay. You're okay. You know. And then I would just lean him forward, like, you're okay. You're okay. You'll be fine. And then he just look at me and just wow, okay. You're obviously pissed off. <laughs> I'm like, you're obviously not happy. I don't know what to do. And then I'm just. You know, I'm just like, what do you want me to do? And then you just look at me and go, ah! It's like... And everything's running through your head like, still. It's like, oh my gosh, you better fucking get back here. It's like, what is she doing? What the fuck is taking so long? It's like, oh my fucking God, this does not take this long to walk to a store and walk back just for cigarettes. Mm -hmm. That's all that she said that she was going for, just for cigarettes. And that's What's it. What's going on back here? What were you really thinking? <laughs> we're all guys in here. I mean, you can see... I, I, I really was just thinking that... I'm glad I don't have any fucking kids. I really am, because if I had my own kids, I would just set them down and be like, I don't know what to fucking do. What do I do? I can't take this no more. What do I do? I can't walk away, because if I walk away and he gets hurt or she gets hurt, that's on me. I gotta, I gotta learn to deal with this. I gotta learn to take it. I gotta learn, especially if I'm gonna be with her. I gotta learn. You know, that's the only thing I was trying to I gotta learn to take care of you. I gotta learn to take care of you. Brittany's not always gonna be around. She's not always gonna be there. What's wrong? What's going on? What's oh my god, Brittany, you never gonna be the fuck back here. And it just it just scared me because it just wouldn't stop. It just would not stop. And it's like, buddy, you're okay. You're okay. And I was just, you know, you're okay, you're okay. And just constantly lean back and forward, lean back and forward. And it it was just getting there. And getting there, it's like, buddy, you're okay. What do I do? What do I do? Like, just stop. Like, what do I do? And I'm like, okay, you know what? If, if you don't want to be held anymore, I won't hold you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I just, I won't hold you anymore. You get that feeling you like know, you're, if you don't put them down, you're if I, if I don't, uh, Yes, exactly. And I don't want to do that. So I'm like, you know what? Where's your jumper? <laughs> Where is that jumper, bud? I grab the jumper, put him down. And he was so screaming, but at least this way I can rock him back and forth. And this way I can keep everything in my head just there without freaking out and wanting to snap. And just go, you're okay. This is not your fault. You're okay. You're in pain. I can't do anything about it. She'll be back. She'll be back. And that's it. all I could constantly keep on telling myself is that she'll be back. She'll be, she'll be here. Matt and her will be back. Matt and her will be back. You're okay. Matt and her will be back. And I was just trying to keep myself calm, but it was like, what's taking so fucking long? This does not take so long. What are they doing behind my back? What is going on? She's expecting me to trust her. What the fuck? She's accusing me. I work all day. I fucking do everything for her. It's never good enough. What do I do? And it's like, oh my fucking God. Oh, he's want to fucking snap, and it's like, it, and it's not his fault because I know he didn't do anything. It's like, buddy, you gotta calm down, you know, you just gotta relax. And I stood up, and the window was down. So I looked out the window, and I just, could, just, I just breathed in. So all I could do was just breathe in, and that still was not helping because I could still hear it in the back of my mind, and just screaming and her and nagging, and all the bullshit that's been going on. And it's like. Mm, just breathe. <laughs> it's like, just breathe, bud. Just breathe. And I just start getting fidgety, and it's just like, I, I, gotta, I gotta get out of here. I got, I can't, got to get away right now. I got to. And that's all I can hear is just screaming. And, and, and the crying. And it, it, it makes me feel so fucking useless because I know he's hurting and I can't do anything about it. And she's not there to help me. And it's like, what do I do? How do I stop the kid's pain? How do I make him happy again? How do I stop him from doing this? And it's like, what do I do? And it's just, I, I can't think of anything. I can't come up with anything in the back of my mind that would do it. And it's like, I can't hurt him, because if I hurt him, it's going 
there's no point to it. Why? It's not his fault. You know, it's not his fault that he's hurting right now. It's not his fault. And I would just sit there and just vibrate my own knees and just sit there and just be so agitated. I was, mm, and, I, and I would just be rocking back and forth and I, and I would be gentle with him because I knew it wasn't his fault. You know, I didn't want to hurt him at all. And I was like, okay, I don't want to hurt you, so I got to be nice and calm, but I'm angry at your mom. <laughs> I'm like, what do I do here? And he'd be in the jumper, and I would just be you know, like this, and he'd still be going at it. And I'm like, buddy, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. I'd hand this pacifier. And he spit it out. Okay, you don't want it. And then he'd just, wow, just start freaking out and start crying and, and screaming. And it's like, oh, my God. Pass fire is a bad idea, so I think I pissed you off a little bit more. What do you want? Like, I know you can't talk, so you can't tell me what you want, but what do you want? You know, it's like, more frustration. You know, so I look him in the eye and say, like, what do you want? You know, just, what do you want? Just, what do you want? Like, just tell me what, and, you know, I just, I just had to sit there and I just, just had to think, and I just, the more I would think, the more I would think about her. And the more I would think about her, the more I would think about she's doing something behind my back. And the more I think about she's doing something behind my back, the more I get paranoid. The more paranoid I get, the more pissed I get. The more fucking pissed I get, it's like, oh my fucking god, you're in here with your fucking kid. You're not doing anything. You're not fucking working. You're not even trying to help me out with any fucking thing you said you want to do. And it's like, oh my god. And it's just like, if I can just fucking, uh, if I was a female, if I was a female, I could smack your mom. I could. Because I, I could get away with it. But I'm not. And I can't do that. And, and, and I just, I had, I put him in his, he was already in the jumper, I, and I just, I was like, bud, I can't do this no more, I just can't do this no more, and I'm like, yes I can, I can do this, I can hold out, I can do this, I can hold out, I can do this, and it just, I, I just had to constantly talk to myself and just tell me it would be okay, she'll be back, she'll be okay, she's fine, you're okay, you're fine, and it's like, I don't know, and it, it's all the doubt, and Everything was like, you got to calm down, you got the baby here, you can't take it out on the baby, because the baby didn't do anything. So, you know, I'm, I'm gently, you know, rocking him back and forth in the jumper. He's still screaming, still crying. So I'm like, alright, you know what? Let's watch a little bit of movies. Let's, let's watch some TV or something, you know, something that can take my fucking mind off of your screaming and off your mom pissing me off. So I would turn him around, and I did. I, he was right in the jumper, and I turned him around, and he was you know, just like this, and I had it right between my legs, and I was just going this, and he was just bobbing back and forth, going like that the whole entire time, still screaming, still freaking out, and I'm like, buddy, what do you want? Just, what the fuck do you want? And just, just stop crying, just stop crying, please, just stop crying, and there's just the ear-wrenching noise, it's like, wow, how does your mother deal with this shit? <laughs> I'm like, damn, boy, how does your mom deal with this? Like, okay, I know it's not your fault, you're probably constipated, you're trying to burp or fart or something, and it's just, it, it, it's just not stopping, you know, just getting there and getting there, and it's like, where the fuck is your mother? Mm -hmm. It just gets to that point where I had, I, I had to lock him in, the jumper, because it snaps on one side. So I locked him in, and I got up, and I just walked by the TV, and I stood in the doorway, I, I turned around so I could see him just in case, and I just, I, I stand there. And as, as he was sitting there, I was just standing there, and I was like, Oh my fucking God, bud. I, I, I'm so glad I don't have any kids. I'm, I'm just so glad I don't have any kids. And that's all I could tell myself. And I'm like, buddy, I, I don't know what to do. And he's looking at me screaming and crying. And it's like, buddy, I don't know what to do. You know, where do I go? And you're like, you can't tell me what you want. Your mom's not here to help me out. And it's like, Matt's not here to even, you know, tell me what to think about helping you out, you know? And it's like, what the fuck do I do? Tell me what I do. And it's like, I, I was like, I need a fucking cigarette. I'm like, I, I just need a fucking cigarette. I'm freaking the fuck out. I need a cigarette. So I had my rolling papers on me. There's a couple of cigarette butts in the ashtray. I rolled a cigarette out of them. And I was just, I was just smoking a cigarette. I'm like, oh my fucking God. Oh my fucking god, this is what it's like being a fucking dad. I'm not ready. I'm not even fucking close to being ready yet, because I'm still fucking angry over yelling. And over screaming that I know is natural. 
And I know I went through it. I know I put my mom and my dad through this. And so I could think about what the fuck did my parents do to deal with this? What did they do to me to help me out? And, and nothing is coming to my head. And I can't think. I can't breathe. And it's like, oh my fucking God. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm panicking because I don't know what to do. And I'm freaking out. And it's like, I, I, I just had to walk in the bathroom for a minute and I had to splash water on my face. I had to. He said, if I wasn't going to calm down, I know it's going to get overheated and I know it's going to explode. But when it explode, I don't want to do it on the baby. That's the only thing I can Just don't go near the baby. Just sit the fuck away. Just sit the fuck away. So I did. I stayed away from the baby as long as I possibly could. But I tried to keep my eye on him, too. I would stay in the kitchen. I would pace back and forth. Pace back and forth. And if I, I would pace three or four times back and forth. And I'd go out. Okay. You're still fine. But I'm not ready to take care of you yet. I'm, I'm not there. You know, I don't want to pick you up and squeeze you or, or pick you up too fast and, you know, and hurt you in any way. I know I wasn't ready for that. So I'm like, okay, I'm still trying to calm down, still fucking pissed off, still freaking out. And I'm like, where the fuck are these two? You know, I'm like, where the fuck? Mm -hmm. I'm just freaking the fuck out. Like, oh my god, I'm paranoid. So fucking paranoid. And I'm just. Mm, just freaking the fuck out, and he's still crying, and he's still screaming. So I sat down on the couch, and looked at him, I said, buddy, I don't know what to do, I don't know what you want. You have to wait until mom gets back, because I don't know what to do. I really don't. And as much as this really fucking and it hurts to say, I was trying to ignore him. I was trying to ignore a fucking two-month-old baby, because I couldn't handle the screaming. I ignored it. And I didn't want to take care of him anymore, but I knew I had to. And it was just, everything fucking just worked. And her, and everything I had to fucking deal with. Her losing her fucking job. Staying with me and my sister for a fucking week. And it just got to me to where I was like, oh my fucking God, if I don't relax, I'm just going to fucking explode. And I've been so good on that. I've... I haven't exploded in, in so long. I mean, it's been years since I've actually freaked out on anybody or anything. I mean, hitting the glass window lamp thing, that to me, that was nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm used to putting random people through fucking windows just walking by me because I just body check them so fucking hard. It's like, bah! It's like, ugh! And I just want to fucking get in there and smash your face. And it's like, I, I, I don't want to be that person anymore. That's why I went through anger management. That's why I went through my counseling in high school. That's why I'm st still trying to go through counseling now. To try and get that under control, because I know I can't do that with certain people. I can't do that. I, I get pissed off at my fucking job. And I literally have to walk out of the store. Because certain people will just fucking get to me to where I just want to smash them in the face. With anything and everything fucking near me. And it's, it's like, Bob, you just don't fucking understand. You just don't get it. You just need to leave me the fuck alone. And it, and, and it just never stops. You know, well, you didn't do this, and you didn't do that. Yeah, why the fuck can you do it then? How come you couldn't step up and fucking do it? Obviously, I'm busy. Obviously, I can't fucking tend to it. You're there. You couldn't help me out a little bit? Just a little fucking bit? Even at work? Can't even just... The fucking spill. I, you can't get a couple of paper fucking towels and clear the fucking spill? No. You can't. So I gotta do it. And then, all day at work, that's all I'm fucking thinking about is how lazy fucking... And then Brittany pops my mind. It's like, wow. You know? It's like... I know she's trying, and she's told me she's trying, and everything like that, but it just seems like everything I do, it's not good enough for her. Mm -hmm. And taking care of the baby and helping her out with the baby is just, it just seems like I'm, I'm a pawn that can just, here, whatever she wants to cool down. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever I want to cool down, it's like, here, take the baby back. Why? You can't handle it? And that's where we were at this point. Yeah. You know, and, and I give her the baby back. I'm like, you really need to fucking take him. Like, please take him. And, and, and you this still, she's coming back. Yeah, the, about a good half hour, four or five minutes later. I mean, all this is going through my fucking mind. And her and Matt finally walk in the door. I'm like, oh, thank you, fucking God. I'm like, oh, if you were going any fucking longer, I swear to God, I would take this fucking kid and haunt you now. I'm like, he's not mine. I'm trying to do the best I fucking can to take care of someone. Not something, but someone. Because he's not a thing. He's a baby. He's someone. He's a person. You know, he's not a fucking dog or a cat. You know, he is a person to be taken care of. 
you know, and I'm like, you need to take him now. She's like, why? I'm like, because he just won't stop fucking screaming. He keeps, he just won't stop. She's like, well, what the fuck do you do? What do you mean what I do? Why the fuck are you blaming me for something I didn't even do? Like, I'm here fucking taking care of your kid while you're out there on a walk to get fucking cigarettes when you could have easily sent Matt to the fucking store to get us cigarettes and then we could spend time with me and you and the fucking baby. Everything about that one? No, of course not. Because you want everything that you fucking want when Brittany fucking wants it. And it's never fucking good enough. Ever. And she got mad at me for that. Well, what, you can't handle taking care of the baby for a little bit? See? Told you you weren't ready to be a dad. <laughs> <laughs> and I just looked at it, I was like, you know what, you're right. I'm not ready to be a fucking dad. So you know what, if you want someone who is ready to be a fucking dad, why don't you go out there and fucking go get him? Why don't you go find someone out there that's better than me? Apparently, I can't fucking handle it. So why don't you go date someone who can? And then, well, did I say that? No, all I said was that apparently you're not ready. And then it's such an argument from there. And then she's like, oh, see, all you had to do is, all you had to do is, and it's like, but I fucking tried that. I tried holding him, I tried burping him, I changed him, I tried fucking feeding him. It's like, what more is there to do? You're not here to help me out. I can't give him or gel. You know, she gives a fucking baby or gel at two months old. Two months old to numb his fucking gun, so he... It, why? So he can stop screaming? He's not teething at two months, which I don't think so. At least personally, I don't believe so. And it just fucking gets to me. It's like, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And it just makes me want to fucking smash a wall. And it's like, wow. It's like, oh my god. I'm fucking freaking out over something I have no control over. And that's when it really gets me. It's like, wow. I don't even listen to my own fucking advice. I don't walk away when I need to. I don't stop to think about a situation that I have no control over. I have no control over him screaming. I have no control over him being upset. So why am I going to get mad at something I have no control over? Because I don't have control over it. That's why I'm upset. That's why I'm mad. Because I don't have control. Because I can't control how he feels. I can't calm him down. And in the back of my fucking mind, I'm just, I'm just screaming. And as loud as I fucking can, because I know I can't do it around him. So I'm just fucking screaming, and I'm crying, and I'm fucking just running and ripping my hair out. It's loud there, right? And, and, and it's just, and then he just won't stop. And he just won't stop, and it's like, bye. You know, even when she takes him out of the car seat, you know, the jumper, whatever he's in, it, I don't know what it is. It's like, boom. It's like, he just calms down. And they want that for you. And it's like, now, why won't you do that for me? You know? And then Brady says, oh, it's because I got tits. Because I have tits. I, I have a chest myself, but just because they're not fucking B or C cups, you're telling me that's going to make a big difference in taking care of your baby. Really? Because he feels better with... with Thumb bags, with pillows, and whatever the fuck you guys want to call them. Like, really? Like, I'm doing everything I can, and you get him, and all of a sudden now he's fine. It's like, wow. You know, and then I, when she comes him down, she's like, babe, did he really piss you off that bad? I said, no, it wasn't him. I said, it wasn't she's him, trying. honestly. I said, it wasn't him. I said, it was just the fact I couldn't help him. And she goes, what do you mean, couldn't I? I said, baby, he was fucking freaking out. What do I do? How do I take care of someone that I don't know anything about? He can't tell me what's wrong if you can. I just felt like a fucking piece of shit for ignoring him. Because I couldn't help it. And I just sat there and listened to him cry. And he heard him screaming the fucking head off. And the only thing I wanted to do was fucking smash the TV. Just smash something. And I had to stop and think. I was like, I went through this a year and a half ago. With a two year old. Who was screaming. And crying. And nothing I did to know. And when. I told his mom about that. It was the same response that I had for me. And I realized something. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to be with anybody. I'm not ready to be a dad. I'm not fit emotionally or 
How do you think I'm not fit? And that's what scared me the most. I can't be with her if I'm not ready to accept everything that she has. I'm not ready to do with a fucking screaming baby, apparently. And I had to walk away. I had to. Before I did something I was going to really regret. And the only thing I regret is ignoring him. I wish I took... That's not a bad thing. It, it, you want to know something? It, no. You want to know something? That's so bad for you. you I just <laughs> let him sit there and cry. Let me tell you something. You know what? I think you could have, if you if you really let yourself snap, I think that open window was going to be him. Okay? And you know what I think happened? Right. I think you made the right choice. Alright? You didn't, you didn't throw him out the window, right? You didn't kill him. You may have been a little bit a little bit frustrated, right? Right? You may, have, you may have held him maybe a little too tight or something, right? Did you look at him like this? I I held him up. I was like, what do you what do you want? Did you maybe get right in his face no, or something? No, no, I can't. Okay. I okay. didn't want to do that because I I no, that's just how wrong. Did, how did you I had him like this. I was like, buddy, what's wrong? And I was just like, what is wrong? And I had his feet up like this. I'm like, what's wrong? And he just wouldn't stop. I'm like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he's You're getting like, frustrated. And he just won't stop. And I'm like, buddy, you got to just stop. Just stop crying. And he, and he just won't stop. And it's like, your fucking mom needs to get back now. It's like, we're right fucking now. She needs to hurry up and get back. And I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, and, I, and I know I'm getting mad. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I feel it. And I can feel it every fucking second. I just want to. It's like. I, I can't do this to him. It's not his fault. And it just makes me want to fucking snap even more. And it's like, your mom needs to fucking get back and hurry up. And he's just, you're ah! It's like, oh my God. It's like, what do I fucking do? Mom? It's like, just tell him what to do. And he just, he's just there screaming. It's like, what do I do? So what do I do? And he just, I know he can't answer me. And I know he can't tell me. And it's like, what do you want? What do you want? And I was like, and I just got to my point where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put you down. I'm just going to put you the fuck down. If you don't like it, you don't like it. But I'm not going to fucking hold you and have you scream in my face. I got way too much in my mind right now. I saw that window. And, and I just looked at the window. I'm like, I got to breathe. I got to fucking breathe. I just got to do something. I got to fucking relax. I just got to... And I was like, you know what? And I just put him down the fucking bouncer. And I put him down like this. And I just put him down. Put the thing over him. And I started bouncing like this. And I'm like, oh my god, I gotta fucking breathe, I just gotta breathe. If I don't, I'm gonna fucking snap. I just gotta breathe. And I, and I stood up, and, and, I, and, I go, and I let him alone. And I was like, I don't even care right now. I was like, I don't even care. I was like, when he screams, he fucking screams, I don't even care. And he's just sitting there in a fucking jumper, just sitting there. And, and I'm trying to rock it back and forth, trying to think twice if I really want to stand up or if I, if I want to pay attention to him. You know, like, what do I do? And I'm just sitting there, and it's like, I'm going to fucking snap if I don't get air, or if I don't stand up, get away, do something. I'm just going to fucking, I'm going to do something I don't want to do. And I had to. I had to get up, and I had to stand there, and I was, I, I left him alone, and, and he was just sitting there, crying like this in the fucking car seat, jumper thing, whatever, and he was just sitting there crying and freaking out and I'm sitting there and I'm like oh my fucking god like you just need to stop like just fucking stop crying just please stop crying and it just keeps getting to me and getting to me and I'm like oh my fucking god just oh my fucking god this is gonna kill me this is gonna fucking drive me nuts I'm gonna do something that you're gonna regret and so I stood there and I started crying as bad as it felt ignoring him, I knew it would have hurt more if I did anything to him. Because I knew it's not his fault. And I had to walk away. I had to ignore him. I think with everything running through your head, you had that, you had that thought that maybe you might do that, right? I was... I knew I would. I, <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Because I knew it wasn't his fault. 
So I just had to walk away. And I strapped him down in a jumper so that way I didn't have to worry about it so I could walk away. And I think maybe they were a little too tight or or I sat him down too hard or something. I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. When he was fine, when she picked him up, he was moving his arms. He was calm when she got home. And everything was all better once she got home. And it was just a big relief. I was like, wow. I was like, no, that ain't one hell of a fucking test. I don't know what it is. I was like, and I just looked at her, and everything that was running through my mind was like, Oh my god. You made the right choice. I didn't want to hurt him. And everyone's blaming me for doing it. I didn't want to hurt him and if I didn't walk away I probably would have. <laughs> I didn't want to do that to her or the baby. And now everyone's looking at me like I abused him. All I did was put him down so I didn't hurt him. I had to walk away. I just had to walk away. You know what? I this collarbone's gonna help. You wouldn't heal if you had the concrete, okay? No, I do like a piece of the I mean, he's been coming and going out of cars, and people have been picking him up and putting him down themselves. I, I don't know. Honestly, it, it could have happened from me doing it. I don't know. All I know is that when I put him down, I, I put him down nice and gentle. I try to bend his arms in, and maybe that's where it happened. Maybe, you know, he was trying to fight it. And it shows. When, I put, when I put him down, his arms, I had him... Like I normally do, you know, like this. Uh, when I put him down at the car with the jumper, I was thinking about using the car seat, but I decided not. To the jumper was easier, it was closer. And when he, when I tried to put him down, his arms were up. I was like, and I was like, no, no, no. I was like, yeah, put your arms down. Yeah, put your arms down. And as I went to put his arms down, I went like that. I didn't hear anything. I didn't feel anything. And it was, it was like a normal regular movement, like he was putting his arms down. And I didn't think twice about it. And when I walked, I, I, I just couldn't take it and I had to walk away. I noticed that he was trying to move his hands up. He was trying to like move them away from his body. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well you obviously want to move your arms. So I bent his elbows in, so he didn't hurt himself, bent his elbows in, and I tried to lift him up. And I didn't think twice about it, and he, he just was still crying, you know. Is that when you were putting him in that jumper? I, I, when I was putting him in the jumper, his his arms were completely up, like he like like he was trying to like reach the ceiling or something. Was he kind of being a little he, trashy? Yeah, kind of. He was kind of like kicking a little bit and kind of like like throwing his arms up. And I was like, all right, you know what? I can't do this right now. You obviously don't want to be held. I obviously can't burp you because you're screaming in my fucking ear. And I just can't take it no more. What do I do? I'm like, the best thing and safest thing for you right now is for me to get you out of my arms before I do something wrong. So I put him down in the uh, jumper, and as I put him down the jumper, I noticed that his arms were still up. And I was like, but I'm not going to have you with your arms up above your head, okay? because you could get hurt like that. You know, if you try to, you know, force him down or whatever, you know, you could hurt yourself. So I was like, all right, come here. So, you know, I, his arms were down, you know, they were, he was willing to work with me. So I, you know, bent his elbows in a little bit, and I put him down, and he was sitting there just crying, and just crying, and both his arms are just sitting there, and he's just crying, I'm like, what is wrong, what is wrong, 
and he's, he's, you know, gently kicking a little bit, you know, he's trying, he's trying to lift up the thing that locks him in, he's trying to lift that up so he can get out, and I noticed that, I'm like, no, 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 I'm like, you're not getting out, I'm like, you gotta stay right there, you're, you're not getting out so you can fall out, so, as he's trying, you know, as he's trying to lift that up, I'm like, no, 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 so I try to move his arms to the side, and, you know, try and keep him away from it, and I was like, alright, now that you're okay, now that you're fine, I'm not. I'm just gonna snap. I'm, I'm gonna freak out, and you're still crying. She's not back yet. And I'm like, you just need to fucking relax. You just need to relax. You just, just relax, please. Just, just relax. And at this point, it's just following up. It's just getting there. <laughs> Everything I am thinking of doing to him is just, I could shake him. I could smother him. I could just hold him, and I could choke him. I could. It's like. What the fuck is wrong with me to have that thought? Like, what the fuck does a baby do to you to make you want to hurt him like that? I'm like, and I just had to stop, and I just looked at him, and even though he's crying and it's ear pinching, I looked at him, and I'm like, wow. And it, it just took my fucking breath away to just know how violent I was. It's like, oh my god. It's like, if I had you in my arms still, God knows what would be wrong. And that's when I had a pace in the kitchen to try and get that out of my head. Because I wanted to do it so bad. I just wanted to be shut up so bad. And to be okay. I, and, and I don't know what it was. I just, I, I couldn't control it. I just wanted to fucking snap. And I did what I thought was the best thing. I paced in the kitchen. Probably got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I had to breathe. I just had to breathe. And everything was just rushing to me. What if Matt and her are sneaking around my back? And what if she's walking around with some guy at work? Why she quit? Did she quit? Did she get fired? It's just, everything was just fucking balling up inside me, and it's, it's like it's never good enough. No matter what I do, it, it's just never good enough for anybody or anything. And it just got to me like, he doesn't even know what the fuck I'm even going through. And yet he's got this ahead of his life. He has still had yet to imagine what I'm going through right now because of bullshit in my life. And that's when I really had to think back because the walk that I had from picking him up from Glens Falls to South Glens Falls, he was quiet the whole entire way there because he was already passed out. And I was talking to him about life and I was like, buddy, you have no idea yet. I was like, life sucks. <laughs> I was like, you have no idea. And I was like, it really doesn't suck, it's just what you make of it. I was like, people bitch and they complain, they moan and groan about their life sucking. It's only sucking because they want it to. And I felt so much better talking to him. It made me feel better. Just walking back to the house, talking with him, even though he was sleeping, it didn't matter to me. Because I knew he was still there to listen, you know, I just... I knew I could talk to him, and he could, he was listening, but not listening, you know, I was like, I, I know he's hearing me, and I'm getting it out as I'm walking, and I feel so much better talking to someone about this, and he was so sad, because I had talked to a fucking two-month-old who was sleeping for me to talk, and I can't talk to anybody about how I feel, and it took a two-month-old for me to relieve stress. And when he was just crying and wouldn't stop, it just got there and I was like, wow. I am so not ready. I'm not ready. Classes for that stuff, though, when you get ready. The parenting classes and how to handle kids crying, things like that. Therapy, things like that. There's a lot of things. That and I was going through therapy in high school for my anger. And I know I have a really bad anger problem, and I, I had to walk away. Is this what happened the last time, too? No. When I was with Alexis, and all that went down,
town. Nobody really knows what happened, and I told him all point blank, I'm not the one to look at. You know, if he's two years old, you know, he gets hurt, he's a kid. He's not that severe, you know, so apparently somebody hit him hard enough to do that. You know, I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that no matter how pissed off I am. I will walk away first. I will not hurt a child because it's not their fault. I would rather fight a full-grown man that can defend himself than take it out on a fucking two-year-old or a two-month-old who can't do anything about it. And that's exactly what I told her. So if you honestly think I hit your fucking son, you have another thing coming. I'd rather have hit you than hit your son. She goes, oh, I thought you didn't hit women. I said, I don't. I said, but it beats hitting a fucking kid any day of the week. So I'd rather lose your respect and be called a fucking woman beater than be called a child abuser any day of the week. So if I hit you once, fine. At least I feel better. At least I know I didn't hurt your child. I'm not going to hurt you. You can defend yourself. Even though you're a female and it's not right, you can still defend yourself. So your son's fucking two years old. He can't do anything. This fucking baby is two months old. He cannot do anything to defend himself. And it's not right to take anger out on someone who cannot defend himself. And I had to walk away. Before I snapped on him. You either snap on him or snap on myself. And I'm not going to do it to him. And that's... I had to look him in the eye. And I had to beg myself not to hurt him. And I had to tell myself it's not his fault. And he was looking at me in the eye like, I can't help it, I'm sorry. And I looked at him and said, but it's not your fault. And he had just that look in his eye like, I'm sorry. Like, don't hate me, I'm sorry. And that killed me. If I knew I hurt him, that would hurt even more than the look he gave me. And just a look alone was enough to fucking kill me. I couldn't even look him in the eye after that. I had to walk away. Before I did hurt him. And I'm glad I walked away. I'm glad I ignored him. It hurt him. And I know I probably really, really would have hurt him if I didn't walk away. And I had to walk away. I had to. I did not want to hurt him because it was not his fault. And just the look he gave me just. I was hurting you already by walking away. <laughs> I feel like a piece of shit for it so bad. I didn't want to hurt him, so I walked away. I had to. I did not want to hurt him. Did you feel like you were in total control when you were putting him into the jumper, or did you feel pretty angry? I mean, I felt that I wanted to get him out of my arms as fast as possible before I did hurt him, because I knew I was getting to that point where I just couldn't fucking take it, and I just wanted to do something so bad I felt to regret it. So I tried to put him down in there as gently as I could, as safely as I thought I did, and as safely as I thought I could. I put him down, I put the jumpy thing over him, locked him in, and I just looked at him and just his eyes on low were saying, I'm sorry. And I just looked at him like, buddy, I don't know what to do. I don't know what you want, what you don't want, what's going on, I don't know what to do. And he just looked at me like, help me, help me. And I'm like, I don't know how to. 
It was just a little hooky came in to help me. I couldn't help him. I just couldn't help him. I just had to walk away. Looking back now that you've had a chance to re kind of replay everything, did you think that maybe you could have been gentler with him or something when you, when you were putting him in? I, I might have rushed it and just putting it in there. But I know it did not hurt him. How, how do you know that? Because I, could, I, I felt it deep down inside that I thought was going to hurt him. I wasn't going to hurt him by putting him in the jumper. I was going to hurt him by shaking him or by throwing him or smothering him or something just to shut him up. But I had to put him in the jumper so I could walk away. I, I didn't want to leave him unattended, but I, I didn't want to leave him there to get hurt. And I did the safest thing I could. I figured if I put him in the jumper, strap him in, at least this way, he's safe, he's fine. If he tries to get out, he's locked in, so he can only lean so forward, he can't go ahead over heels. Mm -hmm. And it gives me a minute to calm down. I when when I had him and I was looking at him I had him just like this. I had him just like this. And I was like, buddy, you gotta yeah, be that's when you were thinking I was about like, maybe shaking. Like, buddy, you gotta you gotta stop. You just gotta stop. And I was like, buddy, you guys and, and I could feel myself getting tense. And I was like I was like, I can't do this. I was like, he's 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 just freaking out, he doesn't understand. And I and I had lifted him up and I was holding him and I'm like, buddy, what do you want? And my knees are going a thousand miles. I was like, what do you want? Just what do you want? And he's just looking at me like, help me. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, buddy, I don't know what to do either. And he's just screaming. I'm like, I can't take this no more. I, 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 they were just like they are now. I'm just like, oh, just. I was like, no. And my whole their arms are shaking so bad. I was like, buddy, if I don't put you down, I'm going to regret it. And I just put my head down, I was like, just put him down, just put him down, just put him down. Think so I... there's some pressure? No, I, no, because I, I had like this the whole entire time. And your arms are tense and And my, my hands are just, my hands are just getting tense, and I'm like, I can't do this, I just can't do this. So I turn him around, put his body against mine like this, and I just put him in the jumper, and I just strapped him in, I just got the fuck up, and I had to walk away. I had to walk away. If I did, I knew I was going to fucking regret it. And... You were saying earlier something about taking his arms... When, he, when I put him in the jumper, his arms were up. And I didn't want him to hurt himself by flailing all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I took my thumb and I was like, buddy, okay, you know, you're still screaming. And, you know, I was like, you're, he's waving and his arms are around. You know, like, you know, he doesn't want to be in here. You know, he's trying to, like, grab at me. And grab at me, and I'm like, buddy, you can't do that. You know, I, I gotta get away from you. I'm, I'm just gonna snap on you if I don't. And it's not your fault. I'm just really pissed off at everything that's going around. And I'm like, and he, he's just, he's just like trying to like reach for me, kind of, you know, like trying to like pull me down to him. And it just, it, it just seemed kind of weird, you know, that he would. He, it was like he was trying to like claw his way out. And I'm like, buddy, you can't do that. So I, you know, I took my my uh, thumb and my hand, and I grabbed him by the arm, and I, and I. Just, gently, and he was willingly to do it, he, he coerced himself like this, and I just put his arms down at his side. Just put his arms down at his side, and he was just sitting there, and out of nowhere, he, he just, he just started moving his arms again, and it was like, buddy, I, I can't let you out, I can't hold you, I don't trust myself enough to hold you right now. So what happened? I looked down, and he, he was just flailing his arms, and I, I was like, if you want to flail your arms, and flail your arms, I'm not going to force you to be in a position you don't want to be in. You know, it's bad enough yeah. I put you down because I don't trust myself. Yeah. So I, I, he was trying to get out of the jumper, and I had locked it in there so he couldn't get out, and he was just, like, trying to grab at it. Just trying to grab at it like he would a shirt and just latch on, and he was just... And he, it, I know he hasn't had enough strength to unlatch it, and I know he's not even doing it from the right area. So I know he's okay, but he just, it, with both arms, he's just, you know, he's, he's in there just 
grabbing at it, and grabbing at the plastic, just grabbing at it. And I, and I just had to stand there, and I was like, grab away. Just grab away, buddy, because if, if you don't, I will. And I can't do that to you. You know, I, I, I had to walk away. I was like, I, I can't hurt you. Was that the way that you were sitting, too? Uh, uh, the jumper was, the jumper itself was right here in front of me. And it leans back a little bit to where you can actually pretty much like slide him in. Yeah. So as I'm like as I'm like trying to put him like in there, with him with his arms, you're sitting behind, behind him like this. Yeah, I'm in the chair right behind him, and I slid him right in, and that was it. And then he and I buckled him in, and that was it. That was the whole entire thing. Was he thrashing? He he, he was kicking a little bit because I because he knew he was gonna get put down, but I it wasn't so bad to where it. it it, it wasn't so bad to where it was like an anger temper tantrum, but it was more or less like, oh, come on, like, you know, like a baby kicks when they don't want to get dressed. Like, he was kind of like, oh, come on, don't put me down, like, come on. You know, I'm like, buddy, you got to go down. i got to walk away. I just have got to walk away. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to put him down like this, and, and I'm, I'm putting him down, and I'm like, buddy, you just got to stop, just stop, just stop, just stop. And he just won't stop. I'm like, either you stop or I'm going to make you stop. And it was that thought right there, make you stop. That's what scared the shit out of me. It was just thought of make you stop. And once I, once I thought about it, I actually said it. And that's what scared me even more. I was like, I'm going to make you stop. And I just couldn't even fucking breathe at that point. I just, I couldn't breathe. I was like, I need to get away from you before I hurt you. And I know it's not your fault. I just need to get away. I have to get away. And I had to walk away from him. Is that how you set him in the jumper? By I didn't grab him by his arms because I know that was... I, I know because people have told me that if you grab him by the arms, you can dislocate the arms or you can even break them or anything like that. So in a perfect world, yeah. But yeah. when you have a baby that's thrashing, it, sometimes I, it, it's. I know, know and it, it's just. It, and I was just like, buddy, you gotta stop, buddy, you gotta stop. And as he's still going, I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm just gonna put you down. So I, I try to hold him with one arm, and he's just, you know, kind of like fidgety. And I'm like, buddy, you gotta stop. You gotta stop. So I move my left hand away from him. I put my right hand underneath his arm, and I put my left one underneath his arm to where it was kind of like reversed. To where now, instead of my thumbs being on his nipples, now my index fingers are. And I was like, buddy, I was like, buddy, I was like, Jesus Christ. And I was trying to rock him, and it just didn't work. I was like, you know what, you gotta go in your jumper, here. And I just set him in the jumper, and I just closed it. And I was like, buddy, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he just looked at me, like, help me, help me. And I was like, buddy, I don't know what you want me to do. And I'm like, I just gotta breathe. I just gotta breathe. I just gotta breathe. And as he's in the jumper, he's, he's sitting in the jumper like this, so I try to screw him down a little bit. And he didn't seem to mind that. He, he he seemed to like that a little bit better being put down a little bit more. And I, I, I was just sitting there and I was like, and I thought like could hear was just a screaming and the yelling. And I thought about Brittany yelling at me and I just thought about everything she said to me over the week. And I just got up and I was like, buddy, I'm sorry, but I have got to walk out of your sight for a couple of minutes. I can't do this no more. And I, I couldn't, and I just walked away, and I had to walk away, and I put my head against the doorway, and I just stood there, and I was just like, oh my god, and he's still screaming, but it's not as bad now because it's like being blocked out. It, it, it's, it's not intense because I'm blocking it out, like, yep, I know it's there, but I don't care. I know he's screaming, but he's fine, I just don't care. And then everything that Brittany has said to me over the week brought it right back tenfold. And I was like, oh my god. And the second he screamed, it was like having her scream in my ear. And it's like, oh my god. And it was just like having her in my face, just seeing her in my face, yelling at me and screaming at me. And it was just like, wow. And she always says, oh, my kids are everything like me. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I cannot deal with this. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with this. I just need to go. I need to get out of here. 
And that's the main reason why I loved it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't stay with her or the baby that night. I, I just couldn't. I didn't trust myself. I really don't. I didn't trust myself then, and I still don't trust myself now to be around either one of them. And that's why I went home, and that's why I walked away. Because I honestly don't know if I did or not. If I did it. I don't even deserve to fucking live if I hurt that baby. And that's what hurts the most is all the fact that I could have hurt the baby. Without even trying. And I don't know if I did or not. And that's why I can't admit to doing it because I don't know if I did or not. I try to handle it the best way I could and I don't believe I squeezed too hard. I, I don't believe I fell down too rough. I think I did exactly what I had to do to try and take care of them the best way I could, as safely as I could. But it's always been in the doubt of my mind ever since Matt told me it. Maybe it did hurt him. Maybe it was me. I'm not even trying. I don't know. I honestly don't know. So, um, <clears throat> Thursday, is that when the talk came about the, the mark on the shoulder? Or was that Wednesday? That was Thursday, I believe. How did, did you work Thursday? Yeah, I worked Thursday. What happened that night? I got out of work, went back to the house. Baby was fine. She was fine. Matt was okay. It was a really good day. And Matt was going to change the baby. And I was like, boy, what's that mark on his arm from? He goes, what mark? I was like, that one right there. And he's like, I don't know. He's looking over at Brittany. He's like, you know what that's from? And she's like, well, how big is it? I'm like, it's not that big. I mean, it's, it looks like a couple of pinch marks. And she's like, it might be from the car seat being too rough. I'm like, from the car seat? She goes, yeah, from the straps. You know, sometimes they rub and, you know, sometimes they pull down a little bit. And that's what causes the bruising. I'm like, oh, okay. What did you think it was? Do you think I, it was I, I was going by what she said because I, I had never seen it. I mean, it was so small. And it was just on the one arm. I thought that maybe, you know, he was trying to reach for something, you know? Can you I mean, show us where it was? It was about right here, right there on his arm. Uh, it looked like you said earlier, number seven. It looked like a seven. Kind of like a seven. Like, it was, like, you could tell it was, like, two, two or three dark marks, but it looked like right in the middle of it, it was like a light yellow kind of mark. Like, it was kind of, like, getting, like, connected. Like a bruise? Kind of, yeah, kind of like a bruise. Is that how they get this color? Yeah, like they, like they just started out, like it, like it just started out, like he got pinched or something. Like, like the first phase of a bruise? Kind yeah, of? yeah, kind of like that. And I was like, that seems kind of weird. And I was like, it's only on one shoulder, too. I was like, it's only on the right one, you know? I was like, if, if he was going to get hurt by being picked up or something, you know, wouldn't it be on both? You know, like, it's just on the one shoulder. Box. Did you see one on the other no. side? Did you look? Yeah. Me and Matt and her both looking at me like, wow, that's kind of weird, it's only on one shoulder. I was like, bye, damn, that's a little fucking awkward, bye. I was like, it's only on one shoulder. I was like, is that usual? She's like, oh, it might just be the car seat being too tight. You know, he might he might be, you know, pushing against it, trying to get out. I'm like, I've heard, I've heard people tell me that they're, you know, immigrants try to, you know, climb their way out. And Did any talk come up about taking him to have him checked out medically and no. see if he was all right? I, I asked Brittany, I asked Brittany, uh, a while ago what was going on because he wasn't, you know, he wasn't going to the bathroom for us. He was just peeing. And I was like, is he constipated or something? She goes, I think he is. I'm like, okay, well, have you, you know, going to the doctor to get it checked out? She goes, no, it'll pass, it'll pass, it's not a big deal, you know, he's just constipated, it'll pass. I still don't think it's passed yet, to be honest with you. So the mark on the shoulder, everybody kind of just 
thought it was from the car seat. Yeah, we all just kind of like shrugged it off. It's like, that must be from the car seat then, you know? And that was Thursday. Did anything else come up Thursday about no. the, the mark on the shoulder? Not that I'm aware of. I and mean, once Ricky I brought it up, okay. yeah, and once I brought it up, I was like, Brittany, you know what that's from? And she's like, no, probably from the car seat. I'm like, it just seems really weird to me because I noticed it. I'm like, man, does that look a little weird to you? And he's like, kind of, but it might be from the car seat. It, it, it does happen sometimes to babies. I was like, Brittany, you see that, right? And she goes, yeah. She goes, it's probably from the car seat. I was like, you guys put him in that car seat more and take him out more than I do, so I don't even know what is going on. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, you guys go in different cars with different people left and right, so maybe it is from the car seat. You know, maybe it's from him trying to get out. Whatever, you know, I'm going by what you guys are saying. And you had no idea what it was from? I I noticed it, and I was like, do you know what that's from? And they're like, no. I was like, it's a little weird. What about Friday? What happened Friday? Uh, Friday, Friday was good, Friday was okay, he was, he was really behaved, I got out of work, went over to Matt's house, chilled with them for a while, and me, Brittany, Emily, and Matt all ended up going off to the bar. Was the bruise still there? For that mark, whatever that mark it, was? It was? Yeah, it was still you there. Still, you still saw it there? But the really weird thing is, though, is that Matt even told me on Saturday, it was Friday. I think it was, uh, no, it was definitely Saturday. I didn't go to work yesterday. Matt looked right at me and goes, you know, it's kind of funny how all week long, Brittany never once sent a note with Wendy or whoever to get the baby checked out if need be, but all of a sudden, Saturday, she sends a note with him saying, oh, if you need to take the baby to the hospital, go ahead. Now, wouldn't you do that if that was your own kid? That's why I asked Matt, I'm like, wait, she's giving other people permission to take her son to the hospital to get checked out, but she's not going herself. And Matt's looking at me like, I don't know. And I'm like, I don't know either. Was there any talk about that mark on Friday when you went over? Did anybody bring it up? Did not that I remember, no. It was all good. We were having a good time. I mean... Was baby was there when you got there, right? Yeah, baby was fine. Who was there when you got there? Um, me, Matt, her, and that was it, I believe. What went on as the night went on? I mean, who, did people come over? You said you went out that night. Uh, we went out. <coughs> um, we went out Friday. It was me, Matt, her, and Emily, which is one of Matt's friends. Um, she's been stopping in lately to see Matt and stuff like that, check up on Matt, see how he's been doing. Um, uh, Matt said that he wanted to go out, Brittany said she wanted to go out, I agreed that if they wanted to go out that they could leave the baby with me so they could, they could go out. Well, that didn't exactly plan out the way it was going to, so... Now this was Friday. Yeah. After what you just went through Wednesday. Yeah. You were willing to take that... I, 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 I was willing to to give her a break. Were you really? I, I, I wanted to prove wanted something. I wanted to prove myself I could do it. I, I, I needed to know for a fact that the first time, if I can make it through 45 minutes to an hour and have her come back, maybe I can push myself to keep going. And if I can't, then at least I know I can go next door and call Matt and tell Matt, listen, I can't do it no more. You guys gotta come home. At least I had a phone to use. You know, at, at least I could, you know, at least man up to myself and try to show myself that I was ready to be a dad. That I could at least maintain myself and control myself enough. Oh, that didn't work out either. All of us ended up going out anyway. That wasn't such a good idea because me and Brittany got into a fight and an argument. She told me to go fuck myself and she went home with Emily. Who did the watch the baby that night? I'm not exactly sure, to be honest with you. I really don't know. All I know is that I... It wasn't you? No. You don't know where the baby went? No. That's the that's, that's one entire part of me saying it's not my responsibility to know. Because, like she said, it's her baby, not mine. If she wants someone to watch the baby, that's her call, not mine. Did it, you all leave that apartment together? Yeah. But you have no idea who wants, where the baby went? No. Nope. Did somebody come over? I, if they did, I don't know. 
Were you drinking or something? You don't remember? Or? I was drinking Thursday night and Friday night, to be honest with you. So I was. It was a rough week for me. That's why I said it. <laughs> Wednesday night was pretty much the cap to me freaking out. The way that I really stress is I go out, I have a couple beers, I see my friends, and I just try to blow everything off from the whole entire week. I just try to let everything go. I went out Thursday with my sister, had a great night with her, watched her back home, passed out. Friday night, went out with Matt and her and Emily. And if I we don't know where the baby was Friday. I okay. I have no idea, honestly. And you guys all went out, and you had a fight with Brittany? I got into an argument with Brittany, yeah. What was she with? On to see another guy, or what? It, w it was just the fact that she was like, oh, well, you know, all your bitches are going to be up on you, buying you drinks, and doing this and doing that. I'm like, I don't have anyone on me doing anything. I might have a girl that come up and go, hey, do you want a drink? Yeah. I want a drink. But nine times out of ten, it's one of my friends. Did you go home with her that night? No. I yeah. went home by myself. I walked home to South Falls. Okay. Yeah, by what myself. Happened, what okay. happened Saturday? Saturday, um, Saturday I called off work and I stayed on the couch all day. Saturday. All day. Okay. And that just... Did you get any phone calls later that day or anything? Or? Nope. My, my phone hasn't been able to get any incoming or outgoing, I get no text messages, I get nothing. You heard nothing from anybody Saturday? Mm -hmm. Sunday? Nothing. All I know is, oh, I woke up, I do, we track that, I did go to work Saturday, I took Sunday off, I didn't go to work yesterday. It was Saturday, I went to work, because Matt stopped in on Saturday and saw me, and that's when he told me. What did he tell you? Matt rushed, Matt came over one time to see me, to get groceries, he left, and then about 45 minutes, it was 5.15, he came running back to the store, and he said, we need to talk. I said, okay, about what? He goes, I don't want to talk about inside the store. We got to go outside, and, you know, let's go. I was like, okay, no problem. I was like, all right. So I took off, I put everything away that I was using and whatever. I clocked off, and I went right outside, and I talked to Matt. And I was like, okay, so what's going on? He goes, did you hear anything about the baby lately? I said, no, my phone's been shut off for a couple of days. What's going on? Like, I don't know. I'm the fucking dark here, but you need to inform me here. Like, what's going on? And he's like, the baby's got two broken fucking collarbones. And I just stood there in amazement. I was like, really? He goes, yeah, really? I was like, does anybody know how? Or where? Or when this happened? Or who it was with? And he goes, no, no one knows. All I know is that they took the baby to the hospital and he's got two broken collarbones. Oh. Okay. Matt started freaking out. I told him to calm down. He said, how can I calm down? I said, but I've already went through this once. And he goes, how are you so calm? I said, because I already went through it once. I said, but I already know what to expect. I said, you think this is going to phase me at all? I said, honestly? I said, no, this is not going to face me in the least, but I said, I already went through this once with a psycho, and this is not going to face me at all. I said, it, younger child, yes, but same situation, slightly different, not going to face me. He goes, really? I said, yeah. I said, but I, let him investigate. Let him, let him take you. Let him talk to you. Let him come to the house. Let him search your house. What do you have to hide? I invited him in this morning. I have no reason not to. Come on in. Look around the house. I have nothing to hide. I'm more than willing to talk. That's why I told Matt, what do you have to hide? Nothing. Then why are you so scared? Why are you so worried? Oh, I don't want to go back to jail. Do you think I want to go to jail? Why was he in jail? Because a girl under the age of 18 told him that she was 18, and she lied about it, and he had sex with her, and she went and he told the cops that he raped her. And she even said that she wasn't 18, and admitted to lying about her age, and they still slammed him with rape. So he was on, I think, five years probation, and now he's labeled a sex offender for the rest of his life because of that. And he's worried that he's going to get tossed back in jail, he's worried that he's going to get arrested, 
I'm worried I'm going to get arrested for something I didn't even do. And everyone's looking at me like I beat the hell out of, out of the baby. And I'm like, no, I didn't. No. It's not in me. I, I, I would rather walk away than hurt anybody. And it just... It just seems like everyone blames me. Because I'm the only one with a clean record. Like, if I go down for this, it's a slap on the wrist. No, it's not. I hope they fucking know that. It's not a slap on the wrist at all. This is a severe issue. Severe issue. You know, and they're all like, oh, well, you know, Chris must have done it because he was the last one with a baby. This is the last one with a baby. It's not always the one that guilt. Sorry and shit, but no. That's not the way I see it. And it's, you could be rough, and a couple of days later, they could show up. It it all depends, you know. It, it's different situations. And that's why I don't understand why she's blaming me for this. I really don't. I mean, when I got out of work Saturday and I went over there to talk to Matt, she was outside, and I was right at him. She goes, oh, don't even fucking talk to me. She walked away. Fine. If you don't want to accept the fact that I don't want to be with you, fine. All in Fidori, all okay. No problem. Is that the last contact you had with Yeah. You haven't talked to her since? Mm -hmm. So you found out about this at about 5.45 on Saturday that the baby got taken for a possible, what did you say, collarbone? Matt told me that he had two broken collarbones. Two of them. I was like, if the baby's got collarbones that are broken and he's in the hospital, and the hospital's telling Matt that he's moving his arms, but apparently he does not have a broken collarbone. Because you need your collarbone to move. Last time I checked, you need your collarbone to move. Yeah, I think they come in all different shapes and sizes. And, you know, there's it's compound fractures, there's hairline, there's all different exactly. kinds. Exactly, and Matt's like, are they the broken, others. broken? And they're like, yeah, they're broken. Probably because I'm thinking maybe the age, too. They have to maybe... I, I don't know. Um, going back to Wednesday, after she left and they went on that walk and... Now, now that you've had a chance to think about it, and you've had a chance to, I mean, I has anybody done this with you since this happened? To go over it step mm -hmm. by step, each movement, mm -hmm. um, each little detail of mm -hmm. what arm. Mm -hmm. um, I know sometimes that when things are bothering you, and you do have some anger built up, and you can remember. It, I would guess I haven't seen the baby. I guess it's smaller than that doll. No, but yeah. And they're very, they're fragile. They're it's an infant, you know. That's why um, I wanted to walk away because if I didn't, I knew I'd do something I would regret. But prior, prior to you walking away, which was like Russ said, you did the right thing. There was some. There was some moving and some stuff when going I was on holding there. In, my arms were getting tense, and I could feel myself locking my hands up around him. Around him. Put your foot right there. Tell me how that. Just sure. With me Go right now, that's. I mean, you're a strong kid. That's. That's <laughs> how, how you're holding. Not like that. How, 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 how as, as hard. That's that's what I mean. That's why I did not want to do to him. As 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 I was holding him just like this. I had him just enough. Yeah, but if you're thrashing around, but now you got to put more pressure. But I still also have a little bit of control too. That's what I'm saying. You don't have any control. Well, you also got more strength than he does. That's no, about that. About that. Or more. No, about that. And that was with your thumbs or your. That, that was with my thumbs on his nipples and my four fingers yeah. behind his back. Now, oh, add, now add screaming. And, I mean, and, and that was frustration over, over I, all I was, was just locking on. my fingers up and I wasn't I wasn't trying to push I was, yeah. but, I was but locking them up and I was just locking them up and I was like I, I can't do it and my hands were shaking my hands I remember shaking and as far as I wanted I just had to let go I had to let go because I knew if I if I went any farther I knew I was going to hurt him and I I, I, I didn't want to lock up right anymore there. you see his arm yeah, there's still a little bit. Even even you said that that was the lighter side. Yeah. There's still little marks. And there's a lot. Um, I know. That's what scares me. That's why I. That's, that's why I don't know if I did or not. And I. What do you What do you think inside? I think I don't want to go to jail, and nope. I think that I might have hurt him. 
without trying to. And honestly, I do not want to go to fucking jail for that. I just, I don't know. I, I, I didn't think I held him hard. I didn't. Wh which movement do you think it was that would have hurt him? Probably me putting him down in the, in the uh, jumper. Honestly. Uh, the, the holding his arms down and then putting him down, possibly. And then having him fight to get out. Do you need anything? Bathroom or anything? I need a cigarette really bad. Oh, um, but I, yeah, we don't, we, none of us smoke, so. Oh, yeah, I can get one at work. Okay, yeah. Alright. I mean, I'm waiting off, so but this is a little bit, right? Alright, let's see.
actually, I'm actually starting to numb. Like, I'm really, like, passing out and, like, so tired. Oh, just because you're tired. Okay. Um, uh, tired and hungry. Okay. Alright, we'll uh, see if we can get it. Let's sit tight, I'll get you something to fill you down. What do you like to eat? Uh, what do you guys got? <laughs> Honestly. Well, you know Route 9. There's Subway up the road yeah. here. There's McDonald's. There's like, uh... McDonald's would be fine. I don't care. I'm not picky. What would you like for McDonald's? Um, whatever's on the dollar menu. <laughs> I'm not picky at all. I mean, we have money to get you something to eat. I just want to know. It's like, do you like Big Mac? Do you like, uh, Quarter Pounder? I Quarter Pounder would be fine. That'd be great. With cheese? Please. <laughs> All right. French fries or? Oh, please, definitely. Please. All right. Okay. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Am I getting arrested? That's what I want to know. Am I getting arrested?
Did you get some McDonald's? Mm, yes, I did. There you go.
I'm the nervous side, to be honest with you, boss. You all set? Yeah, I'm so nervous. Is there, is there anything in there that you want? Uh, nothing there. Honestly. We've been um, speaking with our boss and with the officer attorney's office, and given the <coughs> totality of the circumstances and everything, um, the recommend recommendation is that we file a charge against you. Okay. Um, we appreciate you being candid and being honest. Um, Come on, Jim. Um, I'm going to fight you. There's only one. Just remember, it's only one step. You gotta, everything is done here in steps, okay? Um, but it's, it's just, you know, get this stuff behind you. Baby will be okay, right? I, I think, well, the baby's home, right? Didn't they say the baby was going home or something? The baby's still in the hospital as far as I know. Um, the baby, baby's out, okay? I don't want to go to so, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm gonna go down, we're going to go down to the other room, and I have to get some information from you, and then um, we'll just do the processing, which is a fingerprint and photograph, sorry. Let's, let's go in the other room.